welcome to Coldwater High School, where tonight the homestanding Cavaliers welcome in the Bell Fountain Chieftains. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Mark Shine and our entire WSN crew. And Mark, we've all wanted to watch him play. It's Tavian St. Clair. Everybody in the country is talking about him, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. His stock is rising up the charts. He's already committed to Ohio State. Let's talk about the junior signal caller. Well, a week ago in their, their win that they put together uh, over Sydney, which third year really they won that particular game, 28 of 36, didn't throw an INT, 314 yards, 15 touchdowns. He also rushed for 36. As you have mentioned many times, he's 6'4", 220, and he's, what you tell me, 16 years old, and he can flat out play yeah. this game. Yeah, he, he's he's really, really special. Look, we, we've been down here many a time. We've watched Coldwater take down the biggest and the best in the land. Last week, a little bit of a hiccup. They got the win. They never apologized for winning a football game, but they struggled a little on defense. Let's talk a little bit about the Cavaliers. Well, they, they did defeat Kenton last week, but they gave up a lot of yards. It's a, a rather young team, although their back seven has been very talented over the years, and they're looking forward to having a very good year this year, and they will have to again this evening, but they don't want to give up 300-plus yards tonight to Davian St. Clair and company. Absolutely. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way, the People's Bank. So a beautiful night here in Coldwater. Uh, thought it was going to be a lot warmer, Mark, yeah. but it's kind of, it's not, I wouldn't want to say it's cool. I don't want to say that. <laughs> it, it's 83. It's a bit humid, but, yeah. you know, the flag is just barely moving, and it, it's going from the, the Cavalier side towards the uh, Chieftain side, but barely moving. I don't think the wind's going to be any factor tonight. I think we do need to see will the officials use their discretion to use the, the timeout and get everybody hydrated once in a while or not. But it's a cloud cover right now. It's actually pretty nice tonight for football. It is, and uh, the sun is uh, shying away from us, so we'll see what happens here. Cold water will kick. Bell Fountain will receive, so we'll get to see uh, Mr. St. Clair in the Bell Fountain Chieftain offense. As you said last week, they really rolled up the offensive numbers. Well, and he had, he's got two excellent wide receivers. They're both first-team all-conference a year ago. Riley Near, C.J. Wilson, both were over 100 yards receiving last weekend. They've got a great running back in Chris Fogan. He probably doesn't see the ball as much as he would if they didn't have <laughs> such a pass, a uh, successful football team, but this is a very talented from a skills uh, point uh, for this Bell Fountain Chiefs team. You, earlier this week, you talked to, or today I should say, you talked to Coldwater coach Chip Otten, and yep. he feels really confident about his back seven. He thought his back seven was really good. They've, they've had a good year so far. Some of them played a year ago. If they get any pressure up front from their front four, they think their back seven will hold up tonight, and that, that's an interesting thing to say when you look at sure. St. Clair. Sure, we are underway here, and here is the kick. And this is Riley Near. He'll take it at about the five-yard line. He'll bring it up the middle of the field, and he'll be knocked down immediately at about the 22-yard line. That's where the Chieftain offense will take center stage. The Bell Fountain offense goes like this. Tavian St. Clair quarterback Chris Fogan is the running back. C.J. Wilson and Riley Near. Zane Tevis also comes in in three-set package. Offensive line looks like this. Parker Knox, Owen Larrison, Brody Boy, Jack Varner, and Charlie Bible. So, partners, strap in and uh, hang on because this one can yeah, be good. looking forward to this one, Danny. <laughs> we have been since this one we got on the schedule. <laughs> You're right. We, we're we so excited. I think everybody at WSM wanted to do this game. <laughs> yeah, we, we got the lucky straw. <laughs> yes, we? we did. So the Chieftains are in a shotgun formation. They've got three to the left, one single back in the backfield, and one receiver to the right. There goes the man in motion. They'll hand the ball. He'll get over to the right side. He'll get across to about three yards, and that is number four for the Chieftains, Chris Fogan. That is their main ball carrier, Mark. little jet sweep action for Fogan. Uh, a year ago, or a week ago, I should say, had a, a good year, a good week for him, 73 yards, scored a couple yards on the ground, also caught a pass for a touchdown. He is a talented, as we've said many times now, a very talented, special a group of people in the, who handle the football. They'll go second and seven from the 26. It's St. Clair alone in the backfield. He's got trips to the left and two receivers to his right. He'll look across the left field, and he'll throw the ball and immediately. A nice pitch and catch by Riley Near, but he was taken down immediately, and a ball-hawking defender for Coldwater knocks him down. Yeah, Harleman, who was a first-team all-conference player a year ago, he had that one snuffed out, and they lost uh, three back to, to 23. Look, Mark, I know that the Coldwater made a great defensive play, but did you see the ease in which St. Clair threw that ball a he long did. way, a long way? And, and he's got a great quick release. I think that was one of the things that Coach Otten talked about. His release is so quick that he gets the ball to his receivers in a hurry. That'll back up the Chieftains, third and 10 from the 23. St. Clair's in the backfield. He's got number 33 back there with him. That's Hayden Mans. He's got two to the left and two to the right. 
He'll take the snap. He'll look across the field. He's under pressure. He'll throw the right side. He's got a man out there, a nice pitch and catch. And that'll be a Bell Fountain first down. And you saw the strong arm there and Riley Near. What a catch by that young man. And he got good protection up front, too. They brought five to the Cavaliers that time, and he still was able to beat it first down. Tonight's first down sponsor is Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Our first down sponsor, Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies. So that'll move the ball up to the 37-yard line. That's where St. Clair takes over again. He's in the shotgun again. He's got... Hayden Manns back there. And look, hey, Hayden Manns looks like he big yeah, he force does. back there. <laughs> and he gets rumbling up the middle of the field. St. Clair takes the snap. He looks off to the left, and that's going to be stopped and immediately. Yep. So I'm assuming we get some movement on the line. Oh, they're going to say offsides yep. on Coldwater. First penalty of the game will go against the Cavs. Mark, you've been in a lot of big games. How important is it for Bell Fountain to go down, dominate this first drive, and put some points on the board? Well, the, the last year the game was 31-21, Coldwater won at Bell Fountain. I think if you have I a chance that, to, yeah. to get off to a good start, put points on the board early, and make the Cavs chase you, I think that would be something that uh, the Coach Brown would like to see happen. I think any coach would like that. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. St. Clair in the gun. He's got three to the left. He's got a single set back off to his right, and he's got a receiver to the right. Looks over to the sidelines, waiting for his coaches to give him the call. He's going to stay primarily in the shotgun, as their coaches talked about, moving him around. He'll take the ball. He'll hand it off. First back up the middle, and this is Hayden Manns, and struggling to get yardage, and a nice job, nice second effort by Manns to push the ball up almost to midfield. He is a big young man. He's a big, strong kid. Listed at uh, 6'4", 250, and he is every bit of that, Danny. That'll bring up second and two from the 45. So Bell found with a nice drive here in the opening stance. Beautiful night from Coldwater High School here. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine, the entire WSN crew. We're waiting a long time to watch this young man from Bell Fountain play. And we are here tonight to bring it to you. This is St. Clair in the gun. He's got three trips to the left. He's got a man in motion. That's near going off to the right side. St. Clair looks across the field. He's under pressure. He's going to move around the pocket. He's being pushed back. He's going to throw across his body in the middle of the field, and a nice catch. Oh. Number 11, that is C.J. Wilson. And, Mark, you talked about these receivers, and right now they are as good as advertised. Yeah, he came all the way across the field, made the catch. That's a second first down now that they've gotten on a passing play. Just a flick of the wrist to get the ball to the 44 of the Cavaliers. And that's another Layfield Industrial Welding first down. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Simplified Flooring is our instant replay sponsor. I put too many L's in there, simplify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need to do that, did I? <laughs> that, that young man put the ball right on the motion. And you know, you're rolling to your left and you're throwing the ball back across the field to your right. You still put it right where he wanted it to go that's, with just a flick yeah, of the wrist. Yeah, that's a great point. As, as you say there, he goes across his body. So St. Clair's in the gun. He's one, first and 10 from the 44. He's going to hand off to Near. Near tries to go to the left side, and he's going to be taken down by a host of Cavaliers. And right there, Mark, you see the pursuit of the Coldwater defense. A lot of speed and athleticism. Yeah, they strung it out. It was to the short side of the field to begin with with the Jets sweep, and they just kind of strung it out a little bit. And just a single-yard pickup. Mark, I like right now the way the Bell Fountain coaching staff is really mixing up the offense. You know, we anticipated seeing a lot of balls in the air, and right now they're keeping it on the ground and throwing when they have to. I think every coach would like to come into the, a game with the idea that we can balance things up a bit, and that's certainly what they have done so far. St. Clair's back in the gun. He's got a single set back to his left and two to the right. He's going to take the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to be in under a little pressure. And he's trying to get away, but he is going. Oh, no, he's not going to be taken. Well, he is going to be taken down. <laughs> the uh, young man is elusive, but the great job by Coldwater. Great yeah. job at the end, staying at home. Well, Cody Depwig is the spy, and when he saw that St. Clair was going to roll to his right, he went out and chased him down, kept him in control. That ball went all the way back to the 49, so it's going to be a six-yard loss for St. Clair. And now you're going to see the Chieftain offense in their first big hole here at third and 15. And as a coach in an offensive set, you always want to keep that third down manageable. And right now, now Bell Fountain's in a little bit of, a, of an issue right here at third and 15 from the 49. St. Clair's back in the gun. He's got Hayden Manns off to his left. He's got two receivers on each side of him. 7.02 to go, 0-0 zero, zero on the scoreboard. St. Clair takes the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to go up the middle. He's going to go a long way. He's got Nier out there, and I, I wasn't sure if they had Whoa. early contact, but yeah. I, uh, look. <laughs> I'm no official, but it yeah. looked like he got drugged down there. Yeah, everybody wearing a uh, white shirt on the far side of the field <laughs> thought there was contact. They don't get the call, and they're going to look at a punt situation. 
And you saw Tavian St. Clair there, really not a lot of effort into that. He just snapped his wrist, and that ball went 35, 40 yards in the air. So there you see the yeah. arm strength. So last week in their game, they only had to punt once. And now they're punting here on their first possession of the game. Wilson punted for a 42 yards last week in just a single punt. So C.J. Wilson will take the snap. Back deep for the Cavaliers, number six, A.J. Harlemet. That's a good punt. That is a really good punt as it's going to go out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. So that's where the Coldwater Cavaliers will take off on their first offensive drive. For Coldwater, they'll be led on the field by quarterback Balin Blockberger. The young man was 16 to 25 for 159 yards last week and two touchdowns. He's got Trent Ebbing up front, Troy Milligan, Will Berry, Tyler Jones, and Miles Potcutter, and Cody Deppwig in the backfield. Braylon Harleman in the slot, and A.J. Harleman in the wide receiver position. I think the question was last week after Marcel Blasting game graduated, the offensive POI of the year in the match. Fantastic. What yeah. they were going to do quarterback wise, and Deppwig had a really good, or uh, Brockberg had a really good opening game. So Blockberger will start in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his left, one to the right, and a single set back. We got a man in motion. Blockberger's going to take the snap. He's going to hand it off to the first man up. He's going to go for about a yard. That was number 25, Cody Depwig. And you said earlier, Cody Depwig will take the majority of the snaps as the tailback. Cody Depwig had a really nice uh, opening game as a, as a running back last week, 142 yards and a touchdown. Also caught a ball for a touchdown, and he proved to have a really good offensive game for them, obviously playing both ways and tonight, he, too. He also he did, he, he broke one for 92 yards last yeah, week, so too, so he's home run potential. Well, that, when you get 145 and you get 92 <laughs> of them on one kick, that's pretty good. You know? <laughs> I don't tell anybody that, right? <laughs> Here's Blockberger with the ball. He throws it out to the left side. He's got a man out there, and he's going to be taken down by a host of Chieftains. That's number 14, Mason Welsh. That'll bring it up to about third and five from the 15-yard line. So here we see Coldwater in their first third down situation. Well, you know that they Coach Otten obviously wants to possess the football, but you don't want to go a three and out right here this deep in your own territory and turn the ball back over to the Chieftains uh, sure. right near midfield. Last week, the Chieftains only gave up 19 points against Sydney, and they gave up 262 yards. So, a, you know, a good first yeah. week of preparation here for the Chieftains. So here comes Blockberger in the gun. He'll look across the field. They brought five. He, he looks to throw. Bell found all over. He gets a nice job on a screen pass, and that's going to be a Layfeld Industrial first down. A great job of finding the open man in the middle of the field, and Coldwater picks up their first first down. Found Welch again, this time to the 25. Where they're going to set it down at? It's on 24. So give him a nine-yard pickup. He's got both catches so far. You're right, Mark. They did bring five men, and, and what a great job by Blockberger of not panicking and just yes. waiting for the open man to come. You could see him going through his reads, and he does the right job. So 5-14 to play here from Coldwater. 6-165 pound junior is Balin. We'll go first and 10 from the 24. Blockberger is in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his left and one to the right. He takes the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to throw deep down the right side of the middle. He's got his man out there and a reception made. A.J. Harlemet shows you the skills that's made him an outstanding wide receiver for this cold water offense. Boy, did he. He went up in the air. They had him one-on-one -on -one coverage. He beat the defensive back and then out-jumped him for the ball. Do we have a penalty? We have a penalty down yep. here. An illegal, illegal man, man downfield. Down That's wow. going to bring it back. What an outstanding throw by Block. It really was. Harleman, what is he, 5'10", 160, but just skied up in the air in a one-on-one -on -one coverage, but this is all going to come back. He did a great job, Mark. Also, he had his man beat, and he used his body to shield the man and go up for the football. So great, you know, great, great grabbing skills, as I like to call it. But that's going to be for not, and that's going to come back. Those are the kind of plays you know, that keep coaches up. Danny, I don't know how much uh, coverage our WSN guys put out to the new rules this year, but the one big change, offensive holding, goes from the line of scrimmage yes. this year. Now, that was not this call right here, but that will have a huge effect in football games this year. Oh, absolutely. Because you're not going to look at first and 27 anymore. No. You know, when right. you're holding seven yards deep in the backfield, and uh, that, that's not going to be this case. Obviously, the ball goes back to the 19 after the penalty and still stays first down. So here come the Cavaliers at first and 19 from the 19-yard line. Blockberger's in the gun. He's going to run a little handoff to the left side. Go for about two yards. That's number 22, Jack Ebbing, for the Coldwater Cavaliers. They're going to try to stretch the field a little bit, Mark, try to get those guys out in space, make that Bell Fountain defense run a little bit. Well, you, you know, you don't want to just throw it every possession. Coldwater at Wonder Coach Otten has been pretty good at just keeping the balance offensively, what they want to do, when they want to run, when they want to throw. And I think that's uh, obviously something you'd like to do tonight. 
a rapidly moving quarter, Danny. <clears throat> yes, it is. 412 on the scoreboard, and a scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So here we go at second and 13. Blitz off the edge. Yeah, they he, picked it up. They're going to put him under heavy pressure. Got him, though. Got him on an ankle tackle, yeah. Mark. Good call. Blockberger was trying to find an open man, and he steps up in the pocket, and he just gets tackled at the ankle, and that's going to bring up a big third down at third and 11 from the 23. That was number 25, came off of the edge that time, Jaden Temple. I thought they had him picked up originally, but he was able to get a hand on the Blocksburgers. He broke up the middle and hold him for no gain. Last week in the uh, game against Kenton, Carson DeLong, the receiver we haven't even mentioned, six catches for 109 yards, and he was at 18.2 a game or a, a catch, so we haven't even talked about him yet. Here's Blockburger in the gun. He's going to look across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to his left. He throws across, and he's got his man out there, and a nice reception by number 11, Ethan Elander. And that's going to be a Layfeld Industrial first down. Can, can you throw the football any better than that, Danny? <laughs> he just laid it right into his arms, and he was able then to secure it, make the first down. That was as, about as well as you can play pitch and catch out to the 39. Well, we've talked a lot about Tavian St. Clair tonight, but look, Balin Blockberger taking a back seat to no one and really showing his composure as a signal caller. He did. They had some pressure on him. He just floated the ball right into his receiver's hands, caught it in stride. Second time they've got a first down by the pass. So here come the Cavaliers, first and 10 from the 39 as they try to put something on the board here. They'll hand the ball off up the middle, and they're going to have a nice five-yard gain. Number four, Braylon Harlem at the wide receiver, comes in from the side, and a little razzle-dazzle there as he goes up the middle for a second down. Braylon picked up six, just took it up the middle. Gets a play that typically you think of as going wide, but he saw the uh, hole up the middle, planted a foot, and went, went up the middle and picked up six on first down. So 2.32 to go here in the opening stanza. 0-0 zero, zero on our Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Blockburger's back in the gun. He's got number 25, Cody Depwig, to his left. He's got a single receiver on each side of the line. He's going to hand to Depwig. Depwig goes along the left side. He's got some grass in front of him. He's at the 50. At the 45, he cuts it up the sideline, and he's going to be taken out of bounds for a big game for the Coldwater Cavaliers. That it was. He just kind of picked that open side. Got, got some good blocking to get to the edge, and then he just picked his way down the sideline. A great play call there and a great job by the Coldwater offensive line who really right now is flexing their muscles and pushing that defensive line for Bell Fountain around. 22-yard pickup. That'll bring up first and 10 with 208 left on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine from Coldwater High School here in Coldwater, Ohio. Beautiful night for high school football. Week two of the high school football slate. Can't believe it's week two already, Mark. <laughs> no Good kidding. grief. We just went to yeah. summer break. And it's not even Labor Day. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, OHSAA. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Blockberger with block, a good fake. Great job by Blockberger. And a big time hit. Number yeah. 54 for the Chieftains. And let's see, that is Brody Boy. And it really came up and whacked him a good one. Almost lost his helmet there. It popped up, but it did not pop off. So he's not going to go out of the game. Down to the 23 yard line. Picked up about 11 on that call. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 23 yard line. And it looks like, yeah, we're going to have a timeout on the field. Water break time. Yeah, there's a timeout in the field. We'll take a timeout here on the booth. With 1.48 to go, you're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater High School. That was a very quick break here. <laughs> and Blockburger's back in the gun, first and 10. we got a man in motion. Blockburger and uh, flags are coming down. So we've had a couple of those flags. And we've got some uh, movement in the line for Coldwater. False start, we'll move it back to the 28. That was just an official's timeout. It was not a hydration break. Yeah. I, I wondered when we're getting down to 120 to go or so in a quarter <laughs> what, the, what the reason was. That was just an official's timeout. <laughs> it got going rather quickly, and then the Cavs made movement up front and makes it first and 15. So they, they had trouble finishing drives last week, Danny. They had three times yes. they got inside the 10 and had to kick field goals. Well, congratulations, you made all three field goals, but you also left 12 points on the field. Absolutely. Here's Blockberger. He gets the pass. He's going to throw a little screen pass over the middle. Here he comes up the right side, and he'll go to about the 20-yard line. That reception was made by Mason Welsh, and we've seen Mason Welsh name called a couple times tonight. Yeah. Good screen pass they had set up that time. Blockberger's four for four. Take that one down to the 20, so they picked up eight of those yards. 
Mark, they talk about the in, in high school football, most of the time when you hear people talk about that jump from week one to week two, let's talk yeah. a little bit about what that is all about. Well, it's, it's about a week of having game experience and then knowing, uh, you know, who played well and what we did well and what we need to improve upon and taking it for a week's practice. And obviously, that's, that's why you want to do that in all sports, I think. There's the handoff up the middle. They'll go Jack Ebbing again. Dives across the pile. A gain of about three yards there, maybe two. Just short. That'll be the final play of the quarter. And that will do it from Coldwater High School for the first quarter of high school football action here. Zero to zero on the board. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater High School. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine. Quick first quarter, Mark. Oh, absolutely. Bell Fountain rushed it for 13 yards. St. Clair was three of four for 20 yards. That gives them 33 yards in the opening quarter. They had four first downs. Coldwater rushed it for 45. Lockberger was four for four for 39 yards. That's 84 yards for them. They have three first downs, and each team had the football just once in a quarter. And Mark, turned it over. you know, we talk about it all the time. When you have the best player on the field in Tavian St. Clair, Coldwater's doing an incredible job of keeping him uh, off the field. He's not affecting this game right now because he's not in the game. That's absolutely true. I'm looking to Cavaliers. This will be play number 12 that's on this drive that began with 6.45 to go. So they burned the last 6.45 of the opening quarter, and now we'll have possession going into quarter two. So third and three from the 16-yard line. Blockberger's in the gun. He's going to give it to Depwick. Depwick goes off the left side. He's trying to pick up that first down. And Ooh. a great open field tackle by number six, Caden Snap, comes out of the wow. defensive backfield. That's the way you make a tackle. That really was. Got him right at the ankles that time. It's going to be fourth down. And they put the football back down on the 22-yard line. Mark, this is play number 13. 17. Do you, do you give up the drive? Do you get the field goal? What's your call here? Lengthy field goal. Let's see what Coach Otten, he's got some, some thought process here. Of course, he could run his clock down a little bit yeah, and take right, a timeout. Right. I have a feeling that's what he's doing. He's talking with his staff, and they're going to let this one run down. What a good open field tackle. Oh, there. absolutely. And he saved basically a first down. Uh, so it's got Coldwater taking a timeout here. Bryce Cushow is the uh, field goal kicker PAT guy. He made field goals last week of 21, 23, and 27, Danny, in his three efforts. So they got to feel good inside the thir inside 30 yards. they got to feel really good about what they have. Well, this one right here, you know, you're looking at about a 34-yard field goal. And uh, you know, I think Coach sees him every day in practice. What kind of wheel does he have? He's a 5'10 sophomore, goes 140 pounds. Uh, the wind, as we've talked about, is basically non-factor yeah, this say evening, so yeah. that's not going to be it. He's got the ball in the left hash. Well, let's, let's see what Coach chooses to do. They're looking at, what, fourth and about four? Yeah, fourth and four. That's kind of one of those really, you know, iffy type know. things, you know. <laughs> ah, can we get four? Can we? <laughs> you, got the, you got the home crowd saying, yeah. let's go, Coach, let's go, and he's got to make the decision here. Well, so. and Blockberger is four for four right now. He's made some good decisions yes. with the football. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WSN from anywhere, anytime. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. So here we go, fellas. Fourth and four. Eight bucks. Eight bucks. <laughs> you got to get back in on this they, deal. We, we, look, they pay you enough. You, you <laughs> yeah. can get eight dollars. Well, <laughs> here, here come the Cavaliers. Fourth and four. Fourth and four. Big play of the ball game here from the 18-yard line. Blockberger takes a snap. He's going to roll to his right. He's looking downfield. He's going to throw across the middle. He's got his man out there oh, for God. a cold water first down. How about that? Cool play. And you saw number 14. That is Mason Welsh with his third catch of the night. And I love the play design. He comes from yep. the left side, goes across the middle of the field, beats his man on a one-on-one -on -one situation for the first down. Got the ball right to the 10-yard line, and so they're going to have the, the full distance to go, Danny. That's cannot an, get a first down no, here. That is another Layfield Industrial Welding first down. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. It's the third time, excuse me, the uh, yeah third time that the Cavaliers have completed a pass that got him a first down. Here comes Blockberger. He's going to hand off to the <laughs> to the first man up, number 22, and he gets about maybe a yard. That's Jack Ebbing. Ran a little. Uh, Ran into his own man. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, he ran into his own man. But the formation, they had a, a, a back in front of Blockberger and one behind him, so kind of an odd formation. 
That'll bring up second and ten. We'll see how if Bell Fountain's defense can stiffen up here. 0-0 zero, zero on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. They have been on the field a long, long time. Uh, Eight minutes plus, yes, almost nine have. now. So here they come at second and ten from the ten-yard line. Blockberger's in the gun. He's got a back to the left and to the right. He looks across the middle. He throws the ball. There's the pass, and we got a touchdown. Touchdown number six, yes, A.J. Harlemet. And we've got a Bell Fountain Chieftain down. That is Near, who's down on the field. But the Coldwater Cavaliers on a 15-play drive, Mark? 16-play uh, drive? That was play number 15, 15 right 15-play drive. They put it in the end zone. With 9.52 to go, they take the 6-0 lead. What a well-designed play. Just a square in. Quarterback rolls out a little bit, and we get a touchdown pass. So a great job of keeping Tavian St. Clair off the field by the Coldwater Cavaliers as they strike first. They go up 6-0, trying to make it 7-0. This is number 21 for the Cavaliers, Bryce Cushow, as he tries to give it the extra point. Snap is back, hold is good, kick is up. And it is, yes, it is good. I couldn't Ooh, tell from yeah. my angle. It looked yeah. like it was a little off he the line. line drive it through, didn't he? he got it through. After 9.52 in the first quarter, the Coldwater Cavaliers lead 7-0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater High School. We're with 9.52 to go. The Cavaliers have taken a 7-0 lead. And, Mark, you couldn't have got a better drive oh than that, no goodness. matter what level you're at. I, I, we're looking at a, a drive that went 90 yards. And in that 90 yards, they, have, they went, uh, what, 15 plays, ended up with a really nice touchdown pass, 8.53 off the clock. That's, that is exactly how you draw it up and how you run an offensive system right there. What a great job by the Coldwater Cavaliers and Coach Otten. Mark, I don't know if you noticed this. You look across that field, and Bell Fountain brought a ton. Look, did. Bell Fountain is, is what, an hour and a half away from here, and they brought a ton of people. They did. Big crowd. Of course, the Cavaliers always turn out here at home, but big crowd from Bell Fountain. A lot of expected out of this team this year after being a playoff team a year ago. The kick is up, and it will be fielded at the 15-yard line. They'll go up the middle, trying to break a tackle or two, and a great job of that young man, number 11, C.J. Wilson. And we've called his name a few times tonight, and he gives the Chieftains terrific field position. Um, 9.47 to go here in the opening half, and Bell Fountain has run eight plays and punted on the ninth one. So talk about a good job of keeping them off the field. Uh, the play clock wise, they've had the football for about what, four minutes and 15 seconds, but just ran eight offensive plays. So here comes Tavian St. Clair in the Bell Fountain Chieftain offense. He's got two receivers off to his left and two to his right. He's got a single back on his left side, or excuse me, his right side. He'll take the snap. He looks off to the right side. He's got a man at about the 45 yard line and a nice catch by Riley Near. And right now, Riley Near is offense number one for the Bell Fountain Chieftains. <laughs> I talked to some guys who saw the scrimmage with Bell Fountain and several teams, LCC and several teams at Lima Senior said, it's not just St. Clair. No, he's, no, got, no, he's, he's got some he's really got good wideouts. Yeah. We saw one right there as Riley Near went down and got the football right off the turf, picked up a quick seven yards. That'll bring up second three from the 45. Now they've got St. Clair in an empty backfield. He's got trips to his left and one single receiver on the right side. St. Clair takes the snap, Blitz. looks across the field. He's got an open man at the 50 and a nice connection there. And that'll bring another first down on a second and three play. Talk about getting it away. One man came through, through clear. Chris Fogan with the reception. So he comes out of the backfield. Yep. He shows you his diversity of the backfield as he catches the ball. Mark, I, look, I've had St. and St. Clair on the radio show. What a, what a well-spoken young man. I've talked to him and his father, and I just – I just think he's going to be really successful in whatever he does at Ohio State or wherever he ends up. He's just that kind of kid. Here come the Chieftains. This is first and 10 for the 48. St. Clair looks across the field. He's going to go deep down the middle. Got he's him. got a man out there, and they got a touchdown. Did, they he, get, did he get in? Yes, yes he, he did. did. Riley Near beats the defensive back for Coldwater. And, Mark, you can't throw the ball any you better cannot. than that. <laughs> he threw that ball from about his 40. To about the five-yard line of Cavaliers, soft, put it right in his receiver's hands. That was a perfect pass. Do you think Ryan Day knows something? <laughs> Ryan, you know what? Ryan Day seems to know what to do with quarterbacks. Yes, he does. 
<laughs> and here's the thing, and I've said it before, and I know people are probably tired. The young man's only a junior, and you're looking at physical skills that you just that just blow you away. What a play. You know what I see when I see him? A basketball coach going, please, <laughs> please come out for my team. <laughs> you're exactly right. And the kick is up, and it is good. So with 8.36 to go, the Chieftains respond in a big way. As they go down the field, they tie it up 7-7. We'll be back after these messages. We're back here at Coldwater High School, where the Cavaliers and the Belltown Chieftains are all knotted up at seven. And Mark, uh, not much to report on that long drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Danny, I think one of the things we, we often talk about is time of possession, and that just proved the time of possession. <laughs> when you've got weapons like St. Clair and Wilson and now Deer, you know, it, it's three plays and we're in the end zone. And that took, what, 116 off yeah. the clock. They went 62 yards in those three plays. Obviously, 48 of them on that pass play. And, can't do much better than that, my man. Guys, that pass was effortless. That young man has <laughs> ability that uh, is only going to get bigger, better, and stronger. So here come the Chieftains as they'll kick off to the Cavaliers. We're all knotted up at seven here with 8.36 to go. The ball's going to go into the end zone. Cavaliers will take it out top. And now, you know what Coach Otten is saying? You know, we just drove the football for more than eight minutes a moment ago, almost nine. Let's do it again. We'll go in the locker room up 14-7, sure. and we get the football first in the second half. And the coach says, I'm, I'm happy to do that. That's a great point. And, and you know, Bell Fountain's defense has been on the field a long time. Yes, sir. You, look, you're not going to apologize for scoring quick because you've got the weapons. Right. But, but this has got to, you know, leave their defense a little bit, uh, you know, gassed uh, physically. I, I know, Danny, that it, it's often just kind of a cliche thing, but when you can score in any sport when you can score the game score. is easy oh absolutely you know and and now if you make a mistake defensively you know your guys can get points back here's spread offense here's Blockberger. you're right in the spread offense he's got a man in motion a single receiver to his right two to the left he's going to go to the left side and a, 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 he's got an option pass and down to the 50 yard line as he tries to get into the end zone he's at the 20 he's at the 10 he's going to score a cold water touchdown Oh my goodness. So Balen Bachberger finds Braylon Harleman out of the backfield and he does the halfback pass, the wide receiver pass, whatever you want to call it, and they score again on a single play. How about that? You put the ball right into the hands of his receiver. The defensive back bit on the play as you would expect. They ran that, that quick out several times and then uh, he throws the ball deep and what, what do you mean, drive it? Let's just go score. <laughs> I was just going to say, Mark, what did you mean by uh, keeping them on the field for a while? Yeah. So Coldwater comes out, and boys, we got a shootout right now. That took all of 12 seconds. The Coldwater Cavaliers, in a unbelievable play, score on the first play of the drive as they go up 13-7 to with 8.24 to go. This is number 21, Bryce Cushow with the kick, and it is good. So with 8.24 to go, the Coldwater Cavaliers double up on the Belltown Chieftains, 14-7. to and now we're going to get to see the Chieftain offense come back out with 8.24 to go. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe and Chicken. Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. That's going to be a great simplified flooring uh, instant replay there, Jacob. Uh, our cameraman up here in the booth with us, he got all that action. So uh, tonight's instant replay sponsor is the Simplified Flooring Group. We appreciate all they do for us. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm getting hot and sweaty, yeah. and I'm not even moving. Well, it was easy to do on, on the type of weather we had today, but how about that? Just throw an 80-yard touchdown pass. A little bit of a wrinkle. And, the, and, the, and you look across the field, the Bell Fountain crowd was stunned yeah. on that play, as were we. And you're right. They, they've ran that play a few times, and Bell Fountain bid on it. And as soon as they came up, the defensive well, back was lost. The key is to make it a backward pass, but make it look like yes. it's not. Yes. Make, make it look like it's something you're catching going forward. And that was very well timed and very well done. Coach Otten and staff put that one together. And this, you know, Mark, I look at plays like that, and that's where I separate really good coaches because – no, who saw that coming right. with eight minutes to go in the first quarter and you just drove the ball 15 yard, or fifteen plays and I'm thinking the same thing you are, we're going to see a long drive, but no. <laughs> and that's why we're in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> Coldwater kicks it at about midfield. Ball's going to hit the 20-yard line. That's where it'll be picked up. 
A lot of cold water Cavaliers down there, and that's where the Bell Fountain Chieftains will be taken down. About the 25-yard line does a great job of making something out of nothing the, there. The football is going to be on the 25 because every good officiating crew starts on the 20 or the 25 or the 30. They always put it down right on that, that major yard marker. Yep. This, this will start on the 25. 8.20 to go. And there it goes. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. So we got uh, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Okay, so now do we see St. Clair and his <laughs> team grind it out for 15 plays? Uh, we'll we'll, we'll flip the script. I was going to no. say, uh, no, I don't think <laughs> no. so. St. Clair's in the shotgun position. He's got two receivers off to his right. He's got a single set back in the backfield. And he's got one to the left. He takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man up. It's a gain of about one. They'll give the ball to Chris Fogan, the primary back there, and he gets about one yard line. Fogan is a senior, 5'11", 194 pounds. A little misdirection. They thought they would catch him a little bit to try chasing the quarterback, but the play up front by the defensive line. You know, Mark, last week, uh, Tavian St. Clair became the all-time leading uh, touchdown passer in Bell Fountain history. First game as a junior. As so, a junior, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. So St. Clair's in an empty backfield. He's got trips off to his right and a single receiver to the left. He looks across the field. He's going to go to the left side. He's got his man out there. That's near. Riley near with another reception as he takes it towards the first down marker. It's going to bring up about third and five. You're right, Mark. You said it earlier. He does get that ball out quick. Near five catches, 70 yards now. Of course, 48 didn't want a touchdown. That hurt. That's right. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I keep looking at, at St. Clair, and you say he's 220. Does he look 220 pounds no, from he here? No, he doesn't. No. You know, I, yeah. But, you know, you got to put them airport stats out there. You come get out that plane. You want them guys? <laughs> here comes St. Clair and the Chieftains again. They've got one back, got a man in motion, one back off to his left, and two receivers to his right. He's going to throw it back off to the left side, and it's picked Whoa. off. And a great read. You want to talk about anticipating the throw. Mason Welsh, who we've talked about on offense, he saw the man go to the middle of the field. He cuts the route, and he picks it off. You know what was really impressive about that? St. Clair tried to look him off. He did. He yeah. looked at the wide out closer to the sideline, figured I got my space here to gun this in, and he didn't. That's a great point, Mark. You saw the same thing I did. He looks across the field yeah. towards the sideline, but he's got a man going to the middle, and that's where he takes the ball. And Mason Welsh, who does an outstanding job, and we're seeing it on both sides of the ball for Welsh. Big play, and now the Cavs in great position to go up a couple of scores here. So here comes Blockberger and the Cavaliers. He's got a single set back off to his right. And, and we've got a stoppage in play. And Bell Fountain's going to take a timeout. A much needed timeout for the Chiefs with 7.01 to go. We'll step aside. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Back here at Coldwater High School, where it was 7.01 to go until halftime. The Cavaliers lead 14-7 with a chance to put more points on the board mark with an outstanding play by Mason Welsh. Yeah, and I think that was a really good timeout by the Bell Fountain Chieftain coach, Jason Brown. Uh, this is on the 31-yard line. They're going to have a chance to go down two scores, give his team a chance to rest, give his team That's a it, chance yeah. to, to listen to their defensive coordinator, put something together here. They want to hold the Cavaliers out of the end zone. That's a really good timeout. So here come the Cavaliers up 14 to seven. Blockberger in the gun, first and 10 from the 31. He's got two receivers to his right. He's gonna hand the ball to the first man up. He's gonna go across the 30. He's gonna go to the 25 and that's where he'll be taken down. That is number 25 for the Cavaliers, Cody Depwig. Depwig's fourth carry for 29 yards, just picked his way through the defense that time. And a Good six-yard pickup on first down. Cody Depwood, Mark, does a great job of waiting for the blocks. Uh -huh. He's really patient back in the backfield, and I've noticed that when he carries the ball, he's always looking for the open hole and does a great job. So here comes Blockberger with second and four from the 25. Cody Depwood off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right and a single receiver to the left. He's going to take the ball, hand it off to Depwig. Depwig is going to go across the 25, up towards the 20, and that's where he'll pick up, it looks like, another Layfield Industrial first down. Really good run that time. Again, those people up front, Trent Ebling, Kale Wenning, Tyler Jones, Troy Milligan, Will Berry, moving people around up front and, and giving space. Picked up that rushing first down. Third time they picked up a 
First down on the ground. Tonight's first down sponsor is Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies is our first down sponsor. Danny Hort, Mark Schein from Coldwater High School. As the sun's setting, we're about into the dark hours here at almost halftime, 5.51 to go. Cavaliers lead 14 to 7. This is Blockberger with the ball. He looks across the field. He's going to go to the middle. And it's batted down by number 33 for the Chieftains. That's Hayden Manns, the 6'4 senior. Got his paw up there high and knocked it down. First time he threw an incompletion. He had to pump fake that time, waiting for his man to come open across the middle of the field. And the defensive player got a hand up and knocked it down. That'll set the Cavaliers at second and 10 from the 21 taking their time, which they absolutely should, with 5.44 to go, and they've got a 14-7 lead. All the momentum in the world going their way, and Marcus, you said it earlier, they get the ball coming out in the second half. Yeah, they put a score up here and pitch a shutout the rest of the half, then get the ball in the third. Really good shape. There's Blockberger going off to his right. He's going to throw down middle of the field. Flag. Almost a nice reception by number 14 for the Cavaliers, Mason Welsh. And as Mark said, looks like we've got a maybe an illegal man downfield. That's the second one yeah. tonight for Coldwater. Uh, trying to figure that out, who that was. And if it's just offensive linemen getting downfield too quick. Yeah, and just, just getting anxious, I yeah. think, perhaps thinking it's going to be one of those swing pass type things. You want to get downfield and, and try to knock somebody down. The penalty is declined. So the incompletion will hold. Makes it third and 10 from the 21. So a huge third down here for the Bell Fountain Chieftain defense as they're trying mm -hmm. to keep Coldwater out of the end zone. Or we're looking at four down territory, depending on what they do here. They successfully went for fourth down in the second, uh, the first drive of the game. Yeah, I would anticipate if they don't get any yardage here and maybe try on the field goal, we'll see. But uh, let's see what they do with this play. Here's Blockberger in the gun. He's looking off to his left. He's going to throw deep down the sidelines. He's got a man out there and a lot of pushing. Yeah. And you saw that coming, Mark. As yes, number did. six for the Chieftains, Caden Snap extended his arms. They're going to call that every time. Yeah, that was wide out where everybody in the, in the field could see it. Receiver was looking back, trying to make a play on the ball, and you can see the defender got his hands into it. It's going to be a pass little finish. All our soccer fans out there are saying, hey, we get pushed around like that all the time. No penalties are called. So. <laughs> That'll bring up first and 10 from, with 534 to go. From the, looks about the 11-yard yeah, line. Yeah, takes the ball to the 11-yard line after the penalty. So they can pick up a first down. Yes. Almost time for me to fire up my WSN app to see what's going on around say, Northwest Ohio. You better fire it up. Yeah, half time's up. coming. And go to my new app. That's that right. Yes, now. that's right. Yeah. New app. Lee's Chicken. Here's Blockberger with the ball. He hands the ball off to Depwood. Depwood goes off to the right side. Twists and turns for a gain of about three yards and a great job by Depwig. He was bottled up, Mark, and he just yeah. twists and turns. And you see the athletic ability there as he gets three yards. Just spun himself forward before enough contact to bring him down at the uh, eight-yard line. Had to bring up second and seven from the eight-yard line. Jacobs beat you to it, Mark. He's already looking up he's scores. He's already looking oh, up scores, is he? <laughs> he can't. He's like us. We've got to know what's going on around I, I got a lot of games tonight I'm really interested in. Western Buckeye League oh, opens up tonight. Of, and yeah. some really interesting non-conference matchups. Here come the Cavaliers. This is Blockberger as he rolls to his right. He's got a man out there and just off the fingertips of number six, A.J. Harleman, who he's targeted quite a few times tonight. But he just throws that one just a tad out of the reach of Harleman. Third down. Got to bring him third and seven. I like how they get him out of the pocket and move yeah. him around. He's so athletic, and he's really good at reading defenses. That one was a touchdown. He just threw it a little bit high. And by doing so, he's got a clear look down the field. Yes. We saw a pass got blocked a moment ago, but getting him outside the uh, pocket a little bit, he's got a clearer vision downfield. You know what I like seven. about 83 degrees? My, my coffee doesn't get cold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder why you were drinking coffee and it's hotter and blazes up here. It's always here, coffee time. <laughs> here man. comes Blockberger in the game. Blitz coming. He's going to look across the middle. He's got a man out there. Yes, and a sir. touchdown. The same play they ran in the first quarter. A.J. Harleman with his second score of the game and a nice pitch and catch from Blockberger. Makes it 20 to 7 on the Lee's famous recipe. Just scoreboard. ran that post pattern to perfection. And Coldwater has got it cooking offensively with 4.48 to go as they go up two scores on the Bell Fountain Chieftains, 20 to 7. Perfectly timed ball was thrown right into the bread basket, beat the defender. That, that was just a well-executed eight-yard touchdown pass. So here's the point after try. Bryce Cushow. 
The kicker, the sophomore kicker, 5'10", 140 pounds. All set up by that interception a moment ago. Snap is back, hold is good, kick is up, and it is right through the middle. With 4.48 to go, the Coldwater Cavaliers flex their muscles a little bit more, punch it in the end zone, they make it 21-7. to You're watching High School Football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater High School with 4.48 to go. The Cavaliers have extended their lead 21 to seven. And Mark, we're seeing a, a bit of a problem right now for Belfound in defensive backfield. What do they gotta do to get to that? Uh, look, I know they gotta get pressure on the quarterback, which right. they're really not. Well, they tried that time. Yeah. They, brought, they brought people and you, uh, quarterback Blockberg was able to find a man open on a nice quick slant on the uh, cut inside on him. And that was just a well play. It was a very difficult type of play to defend. And now this is really kind of a crunch time, I think. They've not been able to stop cold water all night. Uh, this is a Bell Fountain football here with 4.48 to go, and, and you're all-world quarterback. This yeah. is a big possession for, for defensively for Coldwater, but also offensively, I think, for, for Bell Fountain Chieftains. It'll be interesting to see if they try and get St. Clair out on the edges and maybe use his speed a little bit. So there's popped a high popped-up yeah. kick there. He'll be fielded at the 30, take it up to the 34-yard line. No, 35. So 35, you're right. The ball is going to be put on the 35-yard line. <laughs> you are not wrong. You are not wrong. Those officials don't want to do any more math than we do, Mark. Uh, <laughs> 4.44 to go. Bring up first and 10 for Tavian St. Clair and the yeah. Bell Fountain Chieftains. St. Clair is 6 for 7. His last pass was the interception. Uh, excuse me, 5 for 7. He's got a touchdown pass. He's got, uh, what, uh, 16. He's got uh, 86 yards passing so far. Let's see if they turn him loose right here. And Mark, when he's been on the field, he's been fantastic. He yeah. just hasn't been on the field a lot because Coldwater's offense is dominated. So here comes St. Clair and the Chieftains. He's in an empty backfield. He's got one in the slot, three off to the right and one to the left. He's going to take the snap. He's going to look across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He finds his man at the 40-yard line and a nice pitch and catch by number 12 for the Chieftain. Harper Scott, that's his first reception of the night. The 6'2 senior catches the ball at about the 40-yard line. And that was under pressure. He just had to step up and throw that one with a guy in his face. Nice seven-yard pickup for Scott. And you see the arm strength right there of yes, Tavian St. Clair. And just beautiful ball that he throws. And he's got total command of that offense. And you just you just wonder how good he's going to be in the next couple years. So he's in a single set backfield. He's got three to the left. He's got no receiver off to his right. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to the motion man across the field. And he's going to be taken down for about a gain of uh, maybe a yard, half a yard. He handed the ball to C.J. Wilson, their top yeah. wide receiver, and he just couldn't find any room. Well, the Cavaliers were setting on that. Plus, they ran it into the short side of the field, so they didn't have a lot of room to operate. They're going to give him a, a yard to the 43. But that's going to set up third and two. That'll be third and two from the 43-yard line. 3.38 to go. Chieftains down two scores. They ran that play twice. Once to near, once yeah. to Wilson. Got a yard each time. Cavs setting on that one. Looking like looks blitz like, coming. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like uh, Cavaliers yeah. are blitzing. And Tavian St. Clair is going to call. He looks across the field, and he wants to make some adjustments here. Play clock's at four. St. Clair gets the snap. He look, goes to his right, and he fakes the throw, and he's going to go back to his left. And he's look got a man out. down yes, deep. Sir. He's got him wide open, and he finds him oh, on the sideline. Mark, I, look, <laughs> you, you say he, it, brother. You yeah, say it. <laughs> Deer just realized, okay, my man is in trouble, and he stopped him, and then he went deep, and he just threw it right on the money, just a, a flick, and threw it right on the money. Uh, look, when you watch that, that at home, oh when my. you get to see that simplified instant replay, folks, you're going to see a quarterback go to his left, flick the ball 45 yards down the field, and it was a perfect strike. Yeah. 46-yard pickup and really good work between quarterback and receiver. Receiver knows I don't come back to the football while my man's in trouble. I go, go deep. deep. That's a great and, point, and he, and he put it out to him. So here we go, first and 10 from the 12-yard line. The Chieftains desperately need to put something on the board here. St. Clair's in the backfield. He's got a single set back. Chris Fogan to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Fogan. Fogan gets out to the left side. He's pursued by Cavaliers. He tries to get to the sideline. He takes it up to pout the four-yard line, and a really nice run by Chris Fogan. That really was. It looked like he was stopped in the backfield, but he was able to leg strength it. Cavaliers couldn't wrap him up, but he bounced it out of bounds. Looking to see where they put it down at. Looks like they're going to put it down to the five-yard line, Mark. So that will bring up second and three from the yeah. five. Two forty-one to go here. 
Fogan, three carries, 12 yards. I was about to say when that play began how well the Cavs had defended the run, but that was a nice one by Fogan. Yes, it was. So here comes St. Clair. He's got number 33 off to his right. That's Hayden Manns, the big fullback. Man stands by his side. St. Clair throws across the middle, and he just overshoots his intended target. He was trying to get it to C.J. Wilson. Just put a little bit too much on that one, Mark. Yeah. No, you, you look at Wilson, 6'2", 200 pounds. He's a big target down near the goal line. Just put that one a bit high. Maybe rush it a little bit. You know what I'd do? I'd take that 200-pound, 20-pound quarterback, and I'd run him right behind that man's guy who's 6'4", 250, and say, stop this, will you? We'll call down the booth and see if Coach Brown agrees yeah, with you. Yeah, he's right there on the right side of the formation, that H-back spot. Yeah. Here comes St. Clair in third and three. He's got Fogan off to his left. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to take it up the middle. Here comes St. Clair, and he is taken down. He it. was hit hard yes, about the three-yard line. And now decision, decision time, Mark. He's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, they're going to be about a yard short. And we got a Coldwater Cavalier that's down. Well, he gets up. Uh, they were calling for uh, the trainer to come out, but uh, he looks like he's going to be all right. Well, they got to go for it. You know, they're, they're down 21-7. They know the Cavs get the ball to start the, the second half. There's 2-11 to go. You got a 220-pound back. You've got another back. In fact, Mans is going to set up right beside him. We're going to get a timeout by. Uh, we're going to get an official's timeout. They, oh, uh, somebody's hurt. Yeah, That's right. they, they, what I was saying earlier, they had a young man that got up kind of slow, and he tried to stay in the ball game, but they think yeah. the officials made the right call there. Yeah. Especially Ebbing. on a you know, week two and a yeah. hot night like yes, this. Sir. Get him looked at and make sure he's okay. So they're bringing Ebbing out, and the Cavaliers are going to take a timeout. Cavaliers are going to take a timeout. The WSN Score app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app score so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all your scores. Listen, Mark, yeah. we do a lot of good things at WSN. Oh, that app is fantastic. Ryan Shadwell and the boys <laughs> oh, putting all that together out there. Ryan, I, I uh, wish I was as smart as Ryan. He's one of the smartest guys. I'm telling you, that guy is fantastic. Well, he's a Bath grad. <laughs> Hey, look, Jacob the Elida grad over here doesn't want to hear that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and look, did I graduate? Oh, yeah, I did graduate. That's right. <laughs> this is a big play. Danny. It this is. is a big play with 202 to go in the half here. Obviously, Bell Fountain, they want to put seven on the board. Cavs trying to keep it a two score game. This is a huge play right here, right before half. Uh, Mark, we're at fourth and two from the three yard line. So obviously, Bell Fountain can pick up the first down. Yep. You're passing the ball, you're running the ball. I really like well, what you said. That, that's, that's a big backfield. I, I would, and now, of course, I, you know, my football skills, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm talking to the basketball I, coach. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm talking Tavian St. Clair. I'm rolling him out to the right, and they give him that pass I forward like that. option. Yep. The ball's on the left hash. You give him plenty of room if you roll him right. He's got a lot of options if he chooses to do that. Got two great receivers. Got a you know, big back on his side. H big bitch back on his side to help block. I, I'm rolling him right. Well, here they go. We've got St. Clair in the gun back there. He's flanked off to his right by Hayden Manns. Fourth and two. St. Clair takes the snap. He looks across. He's going to roll out. He throws off to the right side, and he's oh got his my. man. My got pass. Riley let's, see if this is, let's see if this is offensive this interference. This could be offensive pass interference. Or lineman downfield because they thought he was going to run. Pass interference. It's offensive interference. Wow. Riley Near pushed off the defensive back. And that's going to take away a touchdown. But you saw an absolute dart there from St. Yes, Clair. That was just a flick of the wrist, put the ball right to the back of the end zone. I thought that was going to be the call. I was trying to watch him a little bit. I thought he got away uh, by, by pushing off a bit, and that was the call. Of course, this is a veteran crew. Sure. Jeff Klaus and his guys, they, they, this is a very, very good football crew, as you might expect on a night like this. And this kind of changes the play call a bit, doesn't it? Absolutely. Speaking of that crew here. Got Thinking back, is that the first penalty for Bell for for yeah. yeah. Our crew tonight is Jeff Klaus, Mark Keller, Ben Mock, Brett Roberson, and Damon Coverman. We see those guys everywhere. Oh. That's a fantastic crew. It certainly is. From the 17-yard line now, that, that changes the whole yes, focus of things, doesn't it? Fourth and 14 from the 17-yard line. The good thing is, I guess, if you're looking at positive, they can pick up a first down at the three-yard line. Here comes St. Clair in the gun. He's flanked off to his right by Mans. He's got two to the left and two to the right. St. Clair looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to his right. He's looking downfield. He's at the 20-yard line. He throws it to the end zone, and he's going to overshoot everybody in the backfield. And there was a lot of contact well, back there, there was. Mark, but and there's a lot of people wearing white jerseys thinking, hey, if we got an offensive call against us a yeah. moment ago, what about that one? But it's going to be an incomplete pass. Yeah, and Coach Brown is livid on the sidelines. 
Peace. There was a, <laughs> a lot of people wearing black jerseys and orange helmets. There were a lot of contact down in there. He had uh, Fogan open in the back of the end zone for a moment. Everybody kind of scrambled for the football, and well, there's a no call. Yeah, and, and, and to the officials' defense here, he'd have had to make a heck of a catch. He, he was really yep. flanked uh, deep there. Uh, but uh, well, you know what? The call was made, and that's the call they're going to go with. So with one ten, or excuse me, with one fifty to go, Coldwater's going to take over. And got to imagine they're not going to be real creative I, here. I with wonder the ball. what what coach is going to do with this. You know, we've seen him come up with a, a gimmick play a moment ago to get a touchdown. Is he going to be conservative with it under two minutes to go and a fourteen point lead? Well, here's the other thing too, Mark. Bell Fountain's got two timeouts, and you've got him backed up. So let's be uh, curious to see what Coach Brown does with the ball here. Or Block. with the defense here, if he calls a timeout. Blockberger picks up three. And there is no timeout being called yeah. from the Bell Fountain sideline. Pretty safe play that time, I think, by Coach Otten. He would love to get a first down right here. But if not, let's just run the clock down and pick up as much uh, space as we can. That'll bring up second and seven. One twenty to go. Clock continues to run. Cold Rider leads 21 to seven. Blockberger's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man up to the middle, and he's going to pick up an industrial welding first down. Layfeld first down by number 25, Cody Depwig. And that really helps the cold water offense as the clock They're continues to They're back to the scrimmage in a hurry. Give him 10 that yeah. time. Got the hurry-up offense going with 102 to go. Blockberger in the gun. Depwig off to his right. He's got trips to his left and a single receiver to the right. Depo, or excuse me, Blockberger looks across. He's going to go deep down the middle. He's got a man out there, and that's going to be another pass interference. I saw yep. that one from up yes, here. Sir. As the Bell Fountain defensive back never looked back and just ran over <laughs> A.J. Yeah. Harlemont. Har Harlemont was just waiting on the football. Yeah. The defensive back had his back to the play, ran through the receiver. That, that's a pretty easy call. And I, I know if you're wearing a, a Chieftain uniform right now, you're going, hey. Well, yeah. but, but that was an easy call right there. But this continues the trend of the Bell Fountain defensive backs having all kinds of trouble of dealing with A.J. Harlemont and that yeah. Coldwater receiving crew. That they are. Nope, they're going to wave it off, Danny. They waved wow. it off, called it incomplete. I did not catch that, Mark. Well, they just did. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to mark I'm that. I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. I believe you. <laughs> I thought that was, was he out of, maybe the receiver was out of bounds. He was certainly on the sideline You over saw there. the same play I did. I, I, he was completely yeah. interfered with. I, so. I don't understand that. All I know is we got a, a crew out here knows what they're doing. So oh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I think they made the right call. It's just not one that, uh, that I, I understood quite what they what I, they did call. I love going back into my building uh, that I teach at on Monday morning. Says uh, Jim Epperly, who's a longtime official in this area. He always sets me straight on the calls and stuff. So he, he knows what's up. <laughs> here come the Cavaliers. Second and ten from the thirty. Lockworker looks across the middle and just misses the open arms of number eleven Ethan Elander, the five ten junior. Misses the throw there from Blockberger and 46 seconds to go. Now we're at third and 10 yeah. mark, backed up here. Got to be a little cautious with 46 seconds to go. And now you see why uh, Bell Fountain kept that timeout. With the incompleted pass and the clock stopping at 46 and a half seconds to go, they get one more incompletion or a situation where the Cavs do not pick up the first down. You'll see that timeout and give their offense a chance. Yeah, you got to believe that if they hold them here, they're going to get that quick timeout. So here come the Cavaliers with 46 seconds to go, up 21 to seven. Blockberger's in the gun. He's got a single back to his left. He's going to hand it off to Cody Depwig. Cody Depwig goes across the middle. He's got blocks out in front of him. He's going to get to the 40. He's going to pick up the first down, and he gets pushed out of bounds about the 50-yard line. Huge Miles Potcutter was carried the football that time. His second carry of the evening. And Miles, where's number 24, picked up a whole bunch of yards to the 49-yard line. Huge pickup for the Cavaliers. Makes it first and 10 from the 49. 21-yard pickup for him. We're seeing the cold water offense on full display tonight as they are yeah. running, passing, doing it all. Special teams really dominating this first half. The Chieftains on their heels right now. Blockberger's in an empty backfield. He's going to look across the middle. He's under a little bit of pressure. He's going to roll off to the left. He's going to throw deep down the left side, and he's got a man wide open. And Did he catch he caught, you got to be kidding me. Look, Carter Cadill could not have been in better coverage. No. You've got to be kidding me. Braylon Harlemer just went up and snagged that out of the air under great pressure. I have no idea how he caught that. Unbelievable. There's a cold water timeout. <laughs> 
Where did they put the football down at, Danny? They put the ball at the 12-yard line. Mark, it looked like he trapped it against his helmet. 37-yard pickup, and they're in business again. Well, Coldwater's got it all running right here, up 21-7. to My goodness. Our scoreboard sponsor well, tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak Delphus in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where a home style happens here. A minute and a half ago, they were on their own 17, and you were thinking they were going to maybe just run the clock out and be happy to get to halftime with a 14-point lead, and now they're in business again. Well, you know, backed for, up. I, I thought they'd be a little cautious, but yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> they, they got a chance for seven, if not that. Certainly a chance at three right now. How good is cold water, Danny? I mean, uh, you know, but we know Bell Fountain is good, and and this is a, you know, they won last week over Kenton. Yeah. And, and they're off to a great half uh, football here tonight. And doing my prep work all week, I looked at the stats and I looked at the game stuff and I looked at the tape from Coldwater Kenton and I thought, you know, uh, they got a lot of work to do. But my goodness, from week one to week two, they look terrific, Mark. They look yeah, they fantastic. Do. They'll, look, they're going to be a, they're going to be a difference maker in the MAC. I can promise you that. Well, they go to Fort Recovery next week. Fort Recovery's got Urbana tonight. Here comes Blockberger in the gun. He's flanked off the left by Miles Pockutter. Blockberger looks down the left side. He's got his man out there, Harleman, and he was hit hard. By, and they're going to call it number 54 for the Chieftains. Stood over top of him, Brody yeah. Boy. And look, they're going to call that every time. And man, they are really upset with him right now because that's going to be a first well, down. He made a wonderful play. He did. And he knocked absolutely the did. football loose, prevented a big catch. And then he uh, kind of made a mistake. He did. He did. And look, his coach is letting him know it right now. And he's talking to him. And uh, we won't see that again. I can prob probably assure you on that. And he's hanging his head. He knows he did wrong. Yeah. But you're right. He made a terrific play. He did. That's going to be a first down, though, inside. Well, the six. Yeah, it's going to be about the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal. And we're still looking at 23.6. What a terrific drive by the Cavaliers as they look to extend a 21-7 lead to 27-7 with the extra point. We'll call it 28 if they can put it in the end zone. And that puts Bell Fountain in a world of hurt because, as we said earlier, Coldwater comes out first in the second half. Just looking at some of the things. 28 times the Coldwater Cavaliers have been in the playoff. One state championships seven times. The last time was in 2020. And they've been runner-up seven times. <laughs> My goodness, you played in the state championship. 14 times. 14 times half of your 28 trips to the playoffs. There are schools in this uh, part of the state that haven't been to the playoffs 14 times. So here come the Cavaliers. This is Blockberger in the gun. He looks across the middle. He's going to throw deep down the right side, and he's got a man out there, and A.J. Harlemet with his third touchdown yes, sir. tonight. And there's another flag comes in. Not real sure what that's about. We're going to have to wait and see. You know, he'd been going post. That time he went uh, fly to the corner. Yeah. And the officials yeah. are sorting this out. Let's see what the call is. I, I didn't see any... Any interference of any type or uh, not real sure what the call is as we eagerly await. But if that's a touchdown, Bell Fountain's in a world of hurt here. So Let's see what the call is. He'll come to the home stand. False start. Wow. On cold. Wow. Now, I'll be honest with you, Mark. That play was from the end zone. The call was – the flag was thrown in the end zone after the catch was made. So we've got a false start on Coldwater and an unsportsmanlike conduct, I believe, against Coldwater also? Well, we'll let them sort this thing out, but certainly the football is going a long way back with 17.8 to go. That's a huge play, Mark. Yes, sir. Uh, All the, the way back to the 27-yard line. Coldwater's got a great drive here, a chance to put Bell Fountain down by three scores and just a mental error there. And then we've seen two mental errors by both teams tonight. Uh, not real sure what the unsportsmanlike conduct was, but there was a little jawing down there in the corner. Yeah. I believe that's what it was. So here comes Blockberger and the Cavaliers. They'll take it at the 27-yard line. 17 seconds to go. Blockberger's going to keep it himself. He looks across. He's throwing it deep down the left side. He's got a man out there and a lot of contact, and there could have been a call right there. Uh, a lot of contact there. I thought that was kind of a chicken fighting type thing. Yeah, I thought yeah. they were both had their hands on each I other. I don't disagree both, with both that. Both jostling a little bit. Yeah. I, I think that was a good no call. 
Chris Fogan, the tailback, in coverage for the Bell Fountain Chieftains. You don't often see a, a school the size of Bell Fountain, Mark, where the, where the athletes have to go both ways, but there's quite a few on yeah. the Chieftains roster going both ways. Well, I think that's part of it. Also, they're so skillful, you don't want them oh, sitting sure. on the sideline Absolutely. for half a game. So. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. Yep. 12 seconds to go, second and 27. Here come the Cavaliers. Comes a blitz off the a edge. A little bit of pressure. And the ball's out, of, and it's, it went in the air, and it was caught by an up lineman. Yeah. A nice job there. Who was that? Number 70 for the Cavaliers. Kale Winning, <laughs> center. Kale Winning. Kale Winning gets his uh, first catch of the year. <laughs> and that will do it. Half time here from Coldwater High School. The Cavaliers lead 21 to 7. We'll be back for second half action right here on WSN. Welcome back for second half action here from Coldwater High School. Daniel Rick, Mark Shine, the entire WOSN crew. And Mark, we started this broadcast down the first half talking about that high powered Bell Fountain offense. But let's be honest, it's been all Coldwater offensively. Yeah, their defense has really picked it up. They, they held uh, Tavion St. Clair to 8 of 11 with an INT for just 139 yards in the opening half. Bell Fountain also rushed it for 20 yards, so just 159 total yards of offense in the first half for the Bell Fountain Chieftains. Coldwater, on the other hand, they ran it for 92. They've thrown it for 165. Of course, a Blackburger is an eight, is a eight of 14 without an interception. Uh, 165 yards total offense throwing the football. 257 for them. A lot of first downs, no turnovers. It has been a very good cold water opening half, and they're going to get the football here in about a minute and a half to go into half number two, and Bell Fountain's going to need to get a stop pretty quick. Yeah, Mark, we look at the uh, Bell or the, excuse me, the cold water offense, and they had a terrific drive of 15 plays, and then yep. they strung together a 12-play drive, and just everything's clicking right now. They're keeping St. Clair and the Bell Fountain offense off the field. And, and really, the interception by Welsh made a huge difference huge, too, huge because play. that's just a 31-yard drive they had to put together, and, and that play was was huge because I thought St. Clair made the right move. He looked him off. You thought he threw the ball yes. to the correct play, and Welsh just made a great play on the football and got an interception. That set up a short touchdown drive. Wish they had a fourth down conversion in. So it, it really has gone Coldwater's way here in the opening half, and I, I think Coach Otten has to be very pleased to have this 21-7 lead right now. Today's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way, the People's Bank. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is also Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So just about ready to get started here in the second half from Coldwater High School. Beautiful night for the second week of Ohio High School football. Where are you at next week, Danny? I am down, or excuse me, Mark, I'm over at Ottawa Glendorf for a big WBL showdown. I've got the Wapakoneta Redskins and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Always a big matchup it in the is. WBL. Yep. I got some volleyball on Saturday. That will air on Sunday evening. WSN has made a commitment to put a, a volleyball tournament or a, a wonderful a match between just two opponents on Sunday evenings at 7. I'll be at Parkway on Saturday. That will air on Sunday night at 7 o'clock in semifinals and championship match. Well, we, we, we do a lot of football and basketball coverage, track coverage, but I'm telling you what. WSN, when they schedule girls' volleyball matchups, they schedule the yeah, best, we, we the out, best yeah. teams. And, well, that's easy to do, too, because the volleyball in yes, our area right. is really good. It really is. Great match Thursday night, Crestview and New Bremen. That was a wonderful five-set match, and we're into second-half football. We are underway. They'll take the ball at about the 10-yard line. They'll try to a little fake reverse here. And look he's going to go up the left side. And look out. Here comes Braylon Harleman, and he's going to be taken out of bounds. And a late hit. Yes, that's going to tackle on 15. So the mistakes just keep coming for the Bell Fountain Chieftains. Yeah, that was a really good job of reading. You thought for a moment he was going to take it up the middle, but instead he found the left sideline, got over midfield before we get the penalty for some late hit action out of bounds. So certainly the Cavaliers in business here as we head into half number two. So the Coldwater Cavaliers lead 21 to seven. Let's be honest, Mark, it could have been 28-7. Yes, they had could. a touchdown called back. There was some uh, some uh, flags on the play. Uh, we've had some uh, unsportsmanlike kind of, we've seen just about all of it tonight. Um, but, you know, let's be honest, right now Coldwater is winning in the trenches and they're moving the ball whichever way they want. Looks like we're gonna take this all the way to what, the 28 yard yeah. line? Is that where we're heading with this? Unbelievable, yeah. And you know that Coach Brown had talked about self-discipline and 
and you know putting your team sure. in a better spot at halftime and then to come out with uh, you know a little bit of frustration a penalty because of the big run back and now here's Coldwater with just 28 yards from the end zone. So here comes the Coldwater Cavaliers first and 10 from the 28 yard line. Blockberger is in a empty backfield. He's got two receivers to the left, one in motion. They're going to hand the first receiver through. This is number 11, excuse me, number 11 for the Cavaliers and that is Ethan Elander. They're going to say he picked up about two to three yards there on that play. That'll bring up second and seven from about the 25-yard line. You know, Danny, I'm a basketball guy. You know that? Sure. The backfield is not empty. <laughs> Blockburger's standing back there. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, um, okay. we're going we're to talk about football terms. Uh, we're, we're, I know, yep, I know. We're going to take a long car ride. But I look out there, he, he's not empty. He's there. <laughs> if he wasn't there, the snap would go to midfield. <laughs> Here comes Blockberger under pressure, rolls to his left. Being chased. He's being chased. Oh, he's what a nice down. defensive play. Nice job by Caden Falk. Number 15, the 6'2 sophomore tracked him down. That's, you know, that's one of the few times tonight they've gotten the back. Uh, I was about to say, that's the first sack of the game either way. Their quarterbacks have been in some pressure, but that's the first sack, and that lost four. That'll bring up third and 12, so a big play here for the Cavaliers and a bigger play for the Belltown Chieftains as their defense finally makes a big play. They get a little pressure on Blockberger, and we talked about that in the first half. They, yeah. they got him in no pressure, and they finally get him there. So there's Blockberger, and, well, it's an empty backfield, Mark. It means there's nobody back there <laughs> <Yeah>. with him. <laughs> he's going to take the snap. What's look, coming? Look across the middle, and he's got a man wide. Oh, oh he just missed him. Just missed him. He had a man going across the middle of the floor, or the middle of the field, excuse me. Pass was intended for number 11, Ethan Elander. That's his second uh, uh, pass that he's had on this drive. And we're at fourth and about 12, and they're keeping their offense on the field. Here. Yeah, it's, it's too far for the, the field goal guy. It's, it's, it's too, uh, too short to make a punt out. If you don't gain much out of it anyways, might as well go for it. Big play here for the, the Chieftains. Things have been rolling for you pretty good tonight. So here come the Cavaliers. Miles Potcutter off to the left, the Blockberger in the backfield. He's got three to the to the right. He's got a single receiver on his left. Blockberger takes the snap. Looks again. He looks across. He throws deep down the left side. He's got a man wide open. Yes, Miles Potcutter comes out of the backfield. That, my friend, is easy football. Braylon Blockberger finds Miles Potcutter on a 12, 15 yard reception. They knock it down the field. They score again. They lead 27-7. Well, it was a broken coverage, and you have, you have to look at the film to see who made a mistake. They had two receivers out there, and neither one of them were covered. He had enough time that uh, Blockberger did that he was able to find Potcotter and touchdown pass of 30 yards. So with 10-13 to go here in the third quarter, the Coldwater Cavaliers are making it look easy as they take a 27-7 lead. And here comes... Bryce Cashow to put the extra point on. It is up and it is good. And that young man is four for four on PATs tonight. 10-13 to go here in the third quarter. The Coldwater Cavaliers extend their lead 28 to seven. We'll have more football after these messages. Welcome back to Coldwater High School, where with 10-13 to go in the third quarter, the Cavaliers have extended that lead to 28-7. And again, the defensive backfield for Bell Fountain having all kinds of trouble. They did that time. Of course, it was set up by the good run back on the, the kickoff, making it just a 30-yard touchdown drive, four plays, a minute 47 off the clock. Cavaliers on a roll. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Simplified Flooring is our instant replay sponsor. Danny Horwick, Mark Shine on a beautiful week two of the Ohio High School football season. And it's hot up here in the booth, partner, but we <laughs> know as the season goes on, it's going to get real cold. Here come the Chieftains. This is Chris Fogan with the ball. He'll go to the left side, tries to get back to the middle, and that's where he's going to be taken down at about the 31-yard line. 30 or 31, Mark? You know what? That's pretty up. That's pretty blatant right there. They might leave that one on the yeah, 31. Say, they, Let's see. I don't think they can put that at the 30. <laughs> see where Damon puts the ball at. Well, I said I'm a basketball guy. You don't see me out working out in 80 degree heat and the humidity we had this week, the 100 plus stuff. I'm in that air conditioned gym, my man. 
<laughs> it is on about the 32, though, I think. Yeah, well, so, you know, Damon yeah. Coverman's a basketball guy, too. He is. So. Well, so <laughs> a lot of these, yeah, a lot of these yeah. guys are, yeah. Yeah, there's, a lot of these guys are, so. So here come the Chieftains, and Tavian St. Clair, he's in the shotgun. He's got number 33, Hayden Manns, off to his right. He's got two receivers to the left and two to the right. He takes the snap. He looks across the field. He's under a little pressure. He's going to pull up in the pocket. Flag. There's a flag down yeah. on the field. He's eluding runners, and he's going to be taken down at about the 40-yard line. It looks like we're going to get a holding call. You know, Danny, when it's 28-7 and, and you're in the third quarter, you're going to see a whole lot of Tavian Sinclair oh, yeah, putting absolutely. the ball in the air. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's going to, to try to rally his team here as, as best he can. See what this call is. Face mask on cold water. Oh, 15 yards against cold water? For five, and intentional. Yeah. Okay. So the run was to the 40. To the 40, Which yep. is going to give him an eight-yard pickup. And that'll bring up another Layfield Industrial Welding first down. Tonight's first down sponsor is Layfield Industrial Welding with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 45. Bell Fountain down 28-7, trying desperately to get back in this one. Tavian St. Clair's in the backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to take the snap, and they'll go handoff and a halfback pass up yep. the right side. And he's got a man out there, and he's got a reception. Oh, we lost and he it. Drop the ball. Oh, and that's Wilson, who was an all-conference receiver a year ago, and he's just not going to have that, that happen to him very often. Riley Near takes the pitch, and he throws it down the field, and C.J. Wilson just dropped it. And that was a really nice pass and a really well-designed play. That really was. Had him open. Although the defensive backs converged quickly, but he was open for a moment. Should have caught it, would have caught it, and he's going to look at the film tomorrow and go, oh, man, I should have had that one. And, and you get he's a really quality receiver. He is. You, you get the feeling, Mark, that Bell Fountain's got to believe that if they score here, they're back in this game down 28-14. There's plenty of time left. They need points on the board in a hurry, and then they got to find some defense. Here's St. Clair in an empty backfield. He looks across. He throws to the left side. He's got a man out there wide open and a nice pitch and catch, and they'll take it up to about the 38-yard line. So that's exactly what Bell Fountain needs, and that's Riley Near. And every time the Bell Fountain Chieftains need yeah. a big play, they go to Riley Near. They go to Riley Near, don't they? That completion went to the... But the 38-yard line, so that's a 17-yard pickup. He's got 133 yards tonight on seven catches. That's another Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply first down. So the Chieftains trying to take it down to the end zone with 9.07 to go here in the third quarter, down 28-7. to St. Clair's in the backfield. He's got Fogan in the backfield. St. Clair's rolling to his right, steps up in the pocket, goes across the middle, goes deep down the middle. He's got a man out there, and they've got a reception okay. and a touchdown. Wilson, touchdown. Wilson might have dropped one a moment ago. <laughs> that time he made a great reaction to the football that was in the air. Tavian St. Clair throws it to C.J. Wilson on an absolute strike and finds him in the corner of the end zone for a Bell Fountain touchdown to make a 28-13, just what they needed. Those are a couple guys who played together before he because he really, you know, we talk about throwing a guy open. That's a great. He threw him open that time, and Wilson went to get the football and got it. Partner, that's why you're the best. I'm telling you, that's exactly what I was thinking, and he finds him. You could tell those guys have played a lot of football together. That's just, I said it again, but the effortless throwing motion from Tavian St. Clair, it's just, it's mind-boggling. So here come the Chieftains to try to tackle on that extra point. Snap his back, hold his good, kick his up. And it is no good. So no <laughs> something good. good happens and then something bad. With 8.52 to go in the third quarter, the Chieftains have closed the lead to 28-13. We'll have third quarter action right after these messages. Back here at Coldwater High School. And just like that, gentlemen, the Bell Fountain Chieftains have crawled within two scores at 28-13 on a missed PAT, but give them credit. They didn't flinch. They got it down the field. They put it in the end zone, and just what they needed to do. Yeah, and now it's time to make a, a stop defensively. You know, they, they can't, Coldwater has scored on all but one of their possessions tonight, and uh, that was the one that came towards the end of the half, and they, they need to get a stop right here and, and get the ball back to St. Clair with this 15-point deficit. You know, Mark, we, we have a lot of MAC games on WSN, and we yes. talk about – why are these programs so good? And right here, you're seeing consistency. And they are so consistent, Coldwater is. And year in and year out, this is what they do. So that ball is going to go into the end zone. Sometimes that missed extra point can be a bit deflating. So let's, let's see if they, how, how Bell Fountain responds. Uh, they've not had a good defensive game this evening. I'm looking very quickly. They've given up uh, just, what, uh, 
30. It looks like they're getting about 285, 89 yards so far, well, but they've given up two short touchdowns thanks to an interception and a special teams play. And here's the other thing, too, Mark, is, is Coach Otten on that Coldwater sideline knows he's got to keep that ball in his possession because he knows how good Bell Fountain's offense can be. So we're looking at first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Blockberger's in a single, excuse me, in an empty backfield. He's got trips to the right. He's got a man in motion. He's going to take the snap. He's going to do a little flare pass out to the right side. And he'll be taken down for a, not a gain. It looks like he was tackled at the 19. Looks like a one-yard loss. And he was going for his intended target of Braylon Harlemet, who makes the reception but does not get back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up second 11 for the 19. That's the play that they uh, ran the pass on, the double pass situation yes. on. I thought maybe they were setting it up again, but maybe just thinking, well, if we run it again, they're going to cover that receiver deep and take, take a guy out of the pattern. We don't have to block. But it's a good defensive play, lost a yard. Second 11 from the 19, 8 17 to go. Coldwater leads 28 13 on the Leeds Famous Recipe scoreboard. Not many negative plays for the guys wearing black shirts tonight. There's Blockberger. He throws deep down the left side. He's got a man out there, and he just overshoots his intended target. He was trying for number one, Jack Reithman. Blockberger's pass for Reithman. Reithman had his man beat, and the, the ball was just out of the, bounds. They get some single coverage. He threw that a long way because he, he was over on the right hash. He threw it to the left sideline. That ball was in the air a long way. Junior quarterback's got a good arm. Yeah, I, I think this offense is in pretty good hands with that young man. We uh, talked so about Marcel Blazin game yeah. running the show last year, but uh, they haven't lost a beat here. What a, what a difficult situation <laughs> was Blazin game yes. with that leg injury last year. What and, an outstanding play. Yeah, they were on a roll, and uh, he came back and played some at the he end tried. of the season, but yeah. wasn't just quite the same player he was before that injury occurred. And what do we got? Timeout? Uh, it looks like we yep. got a timeout. So with 8.05 to go, there's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Coldwater High School, where Mark Shine and I are just talking about everything we know and don't know, <laughs> which is a what lot. What I know yeah. is it's third and 11. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Third and 11 with 8.05 to go. Cavaliers backed up in a little bit of trouble from the 19-yard line. Bell Fountain needing a big stop here. Here's Blockberger takes the snap. He looks across the field. He's under some pressure. He's going to come out of the... Out of the pocket, he's going to be taken down, and just exactly what Bell Fountain needed, they hold him to a three and out, and it's going to be close, but looks like the punt team yeah. comes on for good. We've got a calf down, too, as he gets the ball to the 26-yard line, so he picked up seven, but uh, he's going to be about four yards short. Yeah, and it looks like a leg injury, Mark. He it doesn't does. look like he's moving very well. The trainer's going to come out, so we'll let them tend to that young man, hope that he's okay. We'll step aside for a quick timeout. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Welcome back. Uh, Mark, you got a number and a name on the injured uh, Coldwater Cavalier. I cannot tell if it's 78 or 79. It's like is it 79? 79. 79. 79. Yeah. Jacob says 79. He's got the young eyes here. He, well, then there must be 78 Will Berry because there's not a 79 <laughs> on the roster. <laughs> Good call, Jacob Sherrick. <laughs> it is 79, uh, but there's not a 79 on our right, roster. Uh, yeah, I do not have so, a 79 here. Is yeah, one on yeah. yours? Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah, Will Berry at 78. So here comes. We're going to go the way. Here's the punt. Yep. Cavaliers are in punt formation at fourth and four. So the Chiefs just did what they wanted to do. Here they come. Good Get a punt. nice punt off. Yeah. And they're going to push near back, and he's going to leave it alone. But they're going to have good field position starting at the 37 yard line. So here come the Bell Fountain Chieftain marks down 28 13. And Tavian St. Clair is heating up here. You got to believe they're going to put the ball in the air down two scores. Ball went to the what 30, 38 yard 38 line. yard line. That's uh, what 12 and 24. It's a 36 yard punt. Is that our first punt tonight? It is the Coldwater's first punt. For Coldwater's first punt, Wilson punted once earlier. 50 50 tonight here at Coldwater. Sixteen hundred dollars. Nice. Uh, 726 to go in the third. Yeah. And you got a hot quarterback. Yep. See if the Cav defense steps up. or Here comes St. Clair. He's got a back to his left. What you don't want is just to turn it into a backyard football game. Jaden Temple off to his left. St. Clair in the shotgun formation. At least if you're the Cavalier. Temple goes out left. He's going to throw back to his right side. He's got near off to the 35-yard line. Takes it up to the 45, almost to the 45, gets to the 43-yard line. That's where he'll be taken down. A gain of about five yards. Cavaliers have played that jailbreak screen pretty well tonight. And look at Bell Fountain here, Mark, in the huddle and the no-huddle offense as they're going quick tempo here. And I like the call by the Chieftains. St. Clair's in the backfield by himself. He's got trips to the left. He's got a single receiver to his right. 6.58 to go down, 28-13. Here come the Chieftains. Comes a blitz, too. 
Did they get him to jump? Yes, yep. they did. Yep. Nice call there. A little voice inflection there by St. Clair, and the Cavaliers jump an easy five-yard pickup. Let's see if that five's enough to make it a first down. It's going to be close. It's going to be real close, and they yeah, are calling it a first true. down. Another Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies first down. Fourth penalty tonight that has resulted in a first down. Nice job by St. Clair of using his voice and getting them to jump off a little bit of a flinch there that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you could have called maybe or could not have called, but uh, the big junior quarterback does his job. He's in a empty backfield, trips to the left, a single receiver to the right. Wilson's one-on-one -on, -one on this side. St. Clair's going to throw it off yeah. to his left. He's going to go Bo Fogan in the flat. Fogan Look takes out. it out. Here goes Fogan down the left side, and a big-time run by Chris Fogan as he takes it to over the 45-yard line, excuse Fogan, me, the 35-yard line. Fogan had a touchdown catch last week, and you can see why when he gets that spread formation, gets the ball in the perimeter, picks up 30, uh, down to the 35 that time. That's an 18-yard pickup for him. So Chris Fogan, the senior tailback, 5'11", 194, and he got all 194 pounds rumbling down the left side in a nice pickup out of the backfield. Here come the Chieftains. St. Clair's in the backfield. He's got Fogan off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right. They got single coverage on the right side as the safety sh shading to the left. St. Clair sees it down the right side. Yeah, hold. He's got a hold. You've got a flag down. Here goes St. Clair, and that's going to come back as St. Clair goes out of bounds, but everybody in the stadium saw it. Yeah. Every Cavalier fan, I mean, you saw some of the coaching staff from Bell Fountain Point, too. Everybody knew that was going to be. This is that new rule, Danny. Yep, yep, yep. You know, originally this would have been a spot foul. It was about the 40-yard line. You, you know, you'd have tacked on, uh, you know, 10 from there. It's a huge play. Yeah, yeah. it had been first and 25. Instead, it'll be from the line of scrimmage. Well, and now it doesn't really bury you. I mean, it's a hindrance, right. don't get me wrong, but it doesn't right. take you out of the game like some of those plays used to do. Correct. So 6-12 to go, and if the Bell Fountain Chieftains can put it in the end zone here, we've got a new game, partner. Here comes St. Clair, first and 20 from the 45. He's got a man in motion. St. Clair takes the snap, looks across the field, throws across the middle, and a dart, an absolute dart, and it is dropped. And it was on the money, and it was dropped by number 11, C.J. Wilson, and we don't see that much. And C.J. No. Wilson is slow getting up. You just wonder if he didn't hurt himself going across the middle. He's holding his head, holding his neck, the top of his head, and they're going to take him off the field in a good move by the Bell Fountain coaching staff. Make sure that young man is okay because he is a valuable part of that Bell Fountain offense. That pass had some, some serious steam on it. <laughs> um so when we're evaluating the future Ohio State Buckeye, arm strength. Uh, arm check. strength. Yeah, check that one off. <laughs> Leadership. Yeah, yes, check. check. Uh, and <laughs> it's a hold. I'm going to pick up some yards. I'm going to skate out of bounds because I'm not going to let you hit me. <laughs> St. Clair's in the empty backfield. He's got trips to the right, and he's got a single receiver off to the left side. 6.09 to go, second and 20 from the 45-yard line. He takes the snap, goes across the middle in the flat. He'll find Fogan out there for a pickup of about seven yards. St. Clair to near. Excuse me, that was near on the catch. Wow, got, actually got nine on that. Nine, yes, you're right. Because still, of the holding, yeah, yeah I was going to say third and 11, though. Still from, need 11. Yeah, from the 36, so Bell Fountain backed up here. Four down territory for sure when you're down by 15 here, halfway through quarter number three. 5.34 to go. Coldwater leads 28-13. Bell Fountain driving across midfield. Here's St. Clair. He'll take the snap. He's under heavy pressure. He's rolling to his right. He's looking for a man down. He's got a man in the flat and just goes off the outstretched arms of number five, Zane Tevis. And that's the catch that's got to be made. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That was one he put on his hands. Tevis caught it a little bit awkwardly trying to get his body around to get the football in his possession, but he just let it go through his hands. That's a difficult and I got to believe where the ball is spotted on the 36, they're going to go for it here, Mark. Well, let's see. They're bringing a couple new guys off the field. Uh, they need 11. Uh, they're going to punt. They're going to punt. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, And they got I'm, Wilson back in the game who yeah. punted earlier. I am shocked. I really am. But he's got to believe well, in his defense right yeah, now. And yeah, and if he can pin them deep, they, they already got a 
you know, a punt from the Cavaliers on a four, three and out before. And, and Mark, yeah, they're going to talk about this. Right. Let's figure this <laughs> so one, out. one of the coaches went over to Coach Brown and said, "Hey, let's uh, let's think about this." So, so third, or excuse me, fourth and eleven from the thirty-six with five twenty-one to go. Bell Fountain with a huge decision right now. Momentum, basically, this half. They've 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 played yeah. well, Mark. They really well, have. They, they, you know, they scored. Um, obviously, the Cavaliers came out first and scored, but then Bell Fountain came back and scored with a nice touchdown pass to Wilson. They forced a three and out. They got the football back. They've got it down to the Cav 36-yard line. A little bit of mo on their side, and I think Coach's choice is here. Do we try to pick up 11, or do we try to pin them deep by kicking the ball out of bounds somewhere inside the 10-yard line? You can check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. So Mark, I've had this young man, Tavian St. Clair, on my radio mm -hmm. show, and he talks about all the coaches and all the teams that recruited him, and he talks about talking with Alabama and LSU, and uh, this young man has been recruited by everybody in the country and uh, thankfully committed to the hometown Buckeyes. Glad to see that, and, and doing it as a junior. Yes. You know, those types of things, uh, you know, those didn't happen in days past, Danny. That's right. You, in your senior year and, and you know, in the, in this, after your season was over, and now we can gather right here really early now. So here come the Chieftains. They're going to go. go for it on fourth and 11. St. Clair on the gun. Blitz is coming. He steps up in the pocket. He looks across the middle, and he's got a man out there, and he's going to get a oh, first down just that? with pure effort. A great job by C.J. Wilson. Look, Mark, he was stopped short, and yes, he, he, was. he made that happen. W Wilson, you know, he's had his moments where you thought, oh, we missed one, maybe he shouldn't have, but that time he just bowled his way to a first down at about the, uh, where are we at here? We're going to put the football down. Put the football down at, at about the 19-yard 19, 19 line. That gives him a 17-yard pickup. Yeah. He has three catches now for 64 yards, had 100 yeah, last week. Near's got nine catches for 147. It's another Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies first down. Here come the Chieftains. 5.01 to go on the board. First and 10 from the 19. St. Clair takes the snap, looks across the field, under a little bit of pressure, throws it off yeah. to the left side, and absolutely we're going to get yeah. a pass interference. The defensive oh back. Not only do we have pass interference, yeah. if we get a second flag coming uh, in there too. It looks like uh, maybe some. Uh, yeah, I know there's some. He, was, he said something to the official, and I don't think that official liked it. That was a, that was a good call. He just he wrestled him down. Yeah. He was going to give up a touchdown pass, and he kind of wrestled him down. And uh, let, Let's see how the call goes. And number two for Coldwater, that is Gavin Zabreda, and he is livid on the field right now. So that'll move the ball to the, let's see where they spot it at. <laughs> well, so not, not only does Tavian St. Clair do a lot of things with his arm, but he moves well in the pocket. He does. Yes, he, he does. He just gets a, you know, a few feet or a couple of yards sideways, gives you an angle you can't get to him, helps his blockers out. Very smart. Always sees the field. That'll put the ball at the 10-yard line. And it is first and goal. And now the officials stop yeah, play right. for some reason. Well, I think they're discussing is it first and goal or not. It is just inside the 10. And apparently it will be. Yeah, they're going to call it first and goal. 4.54 to go. Cavaliers continue to lead 28-13. Bell Fountain knocking on the door here. Here's St. Clair. He's got Fogan off to his left. He's got two receivers to his right and a single receiver off to the left. Boy, Coldwater shows that blitz yeah, a lot, they? Don't have they have done that a lot yeah. here in the third quarter. Here's St. Clair. Awaits the snap. 4.54 to go. He takes the snap, hands it to Fogan. Fogan goes off to the right side. He's got some room out there. He's got a block, and he's going to go into yep. the end zone for a Bell Fountain touchdown. So Chris Fogan, the senior tailback, takes it in, and there's a flag on the play, and we'll see if they didn't get a hold out here maybe. Uh, Setting right about the five-yard line. What was he running hard? He ran hard. He got some really good blocks. And Bell Fountain. But we talked about the Coldwater offensive line before. Uh, in the first half, but uh, Face Owen mask. Larson, Charlie Bible, Parker Knox, Brody Boy, Jack Varner, they have been the people up front for the Bell Fountain Chieftains tonight. Bell Fountain is right back in this one, Mark, and they're going to yes, call it face mask against Coldwater. So Coldwater with some, uh, some mistakes here in this drive that Bell Fountain's capitalized on. Fogan just four <laughs> carries for 22 yards, but that one got in the end zone for him. 
Let's see what Bell Fountain does with their field goal kick, or excuse me, with their yeah. place kicker missing the last one. Are they going to go for two to try to get that point back? It looks like they may. St. Clair's coming back in the ball game. Yes, they're going to go for two to try to make it a 21-21 score here. Or excuse me, 28-21 score. St. Clair's in the backfield. He's got number 33. Hayden Manns off to his right. Going to take the ball to the left hash mark. That yes. allows him to roll right. That's a good point. So he's got Manns to his right. He's got three receivers off to the right, two far right, one in the slot, and a man in motion. He'll take the snap, look across the middle. The There's flag a flag on the, on the far play. Side, yeah. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to throw to the end zone, and that is off the hands, but we'll have to see what the call is. Pretty well defended by the Cavs that time. False start. False start on the chickens. Yeah. So it will remain 28-19. <laughs> so 28-19. Still makes it a two-score game there, Mark. It does. You know, a couple of extra points. Cost them a couple, three points perhaps. So special teams yep. are the difference right now. Well, you look at that, the special team that gave up the big run back at the opening kickoff of the second half, that cost him seven, or at least put him in a position to cost him seven. So they had to have a couple of special team situations have gone against them, but you got to appreciate what Bell Fountain's done, though, that day. They were down 28 to, to seven. They've scored the last two times they've had it. Wilson made a huge play that time for to pick a first down on fourth down, and you know, they're back in the football game. So here we go with 4.48 to go. We've got a whole new ball game as the Coldwater Cavaliers lead 28-19 in a great drive by the Bell Fountain Chieftains. As they go the length of the field, put it in the end zone, but just come up short on the two-point try. The <clears throat> kicker here, Crable, has put the ball in the end zone a couple of times. Let's see if he tries to nail this one back there, too. So far, Harlemant, uh, this would be Braylon Harlemant, has let it go into the end zone. Let's see if he does so again, standing on the five-yard line. Today's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. People's Bank is our presenting sponsor. Onside so, kick? I don't no. think so. <laughs> no okay, deep. He hammered that. You're right. You're right. He lets it go into the end zone again. Coach is happy to just take the ball to 20. Let's get going. So, Bell Fountain, the defense has shown up here in the second half, giving up one score. Uh, but uh, plenty of time, Mark, 448 in the third quarter. Got a lot of stoppages so far. Like, yeah, first half know, went really quick. Especially the first quarter, just, just rocketed <laughs> by. There was some scoring in quarter number two that slowed it down a bit. This quarter seems to be dragging a bit uh, on a hot, humid night. Danny, you talk about how important football is down here. Several years ago, I was shooting highlights. I came through Coldwater to go to St. Henry to shoot highlights. There was a wedding at the Catholic Church. There were seven cars in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm not going to your wedding. I'm going to football. <laughs> Only in Mac yeah, country. Right, that's right. You don't get married on Friday night in Mac that's country. Right. Blockburger takes the ball, and he's going to hand it off yeah. to the first man up. Yeah, nothing there. Yeah, that was a nice job by that defensive front line as they try to hand the ball to number 25, Cody Depwig. Yeah. He's taken down for no gain. He carries 46 yards for Cody Depwig tonight. And, and I don't mind that more. You got to keep yeah, the Bell Fountain yeah, defense honest. Big number 79 for the Chieftains, Maddox Curtis, 6'3", 277. He's a junior. He is a load in the middle. He's really disrupted that middle tonight. Mama's got to feed him for another year. Oh, my goodness. Second and 10 from the 20, Blockberger back in the backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to fake the handoff, looks across the middle. He throws deep down the middle. He's got a man out there. It's Harlem. Oh Harlem beats the defensive back all the way down the field. And a great pitch and catch from Blockberger to A.J. Harlem. You can't throw that ball any better. And he threw it a long, long way. And the problems continue for the Bell Fountain defensive backs. A.J. Harlem, catch number six, I believe, on the night. Just a fantastic night. All the way down to the 25-yard line. That's a 55-yard oh, play. Harlem's got 153 yards in receptions this evening. Just 153 On yards. On my uh, highly yeah. inefficient score sheets that I've been watching the game too much. <laughs> well, we enjoy it too. Here come the Cavaliers, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. 
They'll hand the ball off, and they'll take it out of bounds for maybe a gain of about a yard. Number 24, Miles Potcutter on the carry there. And the clock continues to run at 3.20 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Danny Hulbrook, Mark Schein from Coldwater High School, week two of the Ohio High School football season. I'm going to have a chance to watch the replay of this game. I want to see how far that ball was in the air, the last play that uh, Blockburger threw yes, to Harlem. Yes, that was a fantastic Indeed. play. A long way and right on the money. They'll hand the ball inside off. Inside handoff. Run. Inside handoff, number four. Tries to, uh, a water bug action there, tries to get back to the first down marker. Braylon Harlem with the ball carry. Pick up a six for him. And Coldwater just keeps coming at yeah. you in waves, whether they're throwing the ball, running the ball. Just an outstanding performance by this offense. Very efficient. Uh, nothing fancy. Just beats you down the field with athletes. And uh, what, what this is going to be a fantastic team come tournament time. <laughs> It is they're, fantastic. They're going to yeah. make a big decision who makes a, a the Wildcat formation that time. Wow, dude. Cody Depwig with yeah. the Wildcat. Gets a direct snap right to Depwig, and he takes it right up the middle for another Layfield Industrial Welding first down. Kind of crossed him up. Haven't seen that play yet this evening. Out of the Wildcat formation down to the 14. And Mark, now you're seeing the Bell Fountain uh, defensive linemen on their yes. knees. They got their hands on their hips. And look, it's, it's natural reaction for kids to get tired in weather like this. And that defense has been on the field a long time. And, it's been, and some of those guys are playing both ways. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you're right. It, it's starting to – and it wears on you mentally. Giving up first downs like that. First and ten from the 14. Blockberger takes the direct snap. Flag and it looks like one. maybe another mm -hmm. false start on the Cavaliers. Oh, no, they're going to call it on Bell Fountain. Offsides. Offsides. They'll take the ball down to the nine. And these are the offsides and the motion penalties. These are plays that, uh, or these are penalties that the coaching staff can fix directly with the kids. And hey, look, we're going to see a lot of this in the first couple weeks of high school football. Uh, the guys that get it fixed are the ones that go on to success. So we'll see what happens here. Well, then we decided to bring in, you talked about uh, Maddox Curtis at 277. And then we decided to bring in Jordan Hensley. He's 6'1", 277 as well. So they got some big fellows up front going to try to stop this cold water running game. First and goal, uh, first down from the five. Second nine. and five from Second the nine. Yeah, they got a chance it's, to pick up a first down. I think it's first. It's, uh, I think you're right. There was Depwig yeah, who yeah, falls yeah. into the line, but uh, ends up getting a yard. I thought he fell down behind the line of scrimmage, but he ends up going across the pile and picking up a couple He's yards. That was Potcotter. He's at 24 and 25 are hard for these old eyes to see sometimes. <laughs> to the seven, we'll give him a couple yards on that one. Still a hot, humid, muggy night here at Coldwater High School. And, of course, it should be. It's early or it's late August. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be like. It's supposed to be. That's yeah. correct. You're right. We're going to get three high school football games in before Labor Day, which uh, back in the day was unheard of. But, yes, uh, it is. I'm not sure it's a good idea. I, I, you know what? We can. That's another day, but there's a lot of people that feel the same way. There's an off-tackle play there by the Cavaliers. They'll pick up about two yards on the play. Number 25 for the Cavaliers, Cody Depwood. I'm not. A, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not afraid to say that. I think. Uh, well, here's what it is, Danny. It's it's football players and football coaches, assistant coaches. It's the band. It's the cheerleaders. Sure. It's the athletic department. We're all in in July now. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, we started practice on what July 31st, yeah. and uh, we've just we've taken summer away from young men and women, young women. We have. You're absolutely and right. And their families. So here come the Cavaliers. And we got movement. Third and four, with nine seconds to go. And we, you're right. We got a false start oh, on the Cavaliers. Cavaliers. Somebody in the backfield was getting an inching forward. He was either going to take the, the handoff or he was going to get a block up up front, and was inching forward a little bit and got called for it with 9.8 to go. So as the clock winds down at the end of the third quarter here, the Cavaliers trying to put someone on the board. They're going to let the clock run out as it goes to five, four, three, two, to one. That will take us to the end of the third quarter. As the fourth quarter starts, the Coldwater Cavaliers continue to lead 28-19. You're watching high school football right here on WSN.
start of the fourth quarter from Coldwater High School. Daniel Rick, Mark Shine. The Cavaliers lead 28-19 over the Bell Fountain Chieftains. They've got the ball third and nine on the 13-yard line, looking to extend that lead. Big play here for the Chieftains as they're trying to keep Coldwater out of the end zone, get back in this one. Still down two scores as they've missed a point after try and a two-point conversion. Yardage evened up a little bit. Coldwater with 374. Bell Fountain 282 after a good quarter. There's Blockberger in the gun. He takes the snap, throws down the left side. He's got a man out there. That's going to be picked off in the end zone. And are they going to call it a reception? Looks like they are going to call it a reception. So a huge defensive stand for the Chieftains. And Mark, with 11.53 to go, that's a huge it play. It really is. You know, we're in, we've still got basically 12 minutes to go. Belfound with a little bit of momentum. Stop Coldwater again, this time with the first interception, first turnover of the game for the Cavaliers. So the Chieftains are going to take over at their own 20-yard line with 11.53 to go. And Tavian St. Clair going to try to engineer another scoring drive for the Bell Fountain Chieftains. You get the feeling that the Cavaliers are going to have to score again to win the game. Yes, I, I do. I think Bell Fountain's going to put some points on the board. We'll see if the Cavalier defense can stiffen a bit, but I just have the feeling the Cavs are going to have to score again. Well, Mark, we've been pretty critical all night on that defensive backfield from Bell Fountain, but right there not, they yep. made a really nice play. So they, they, they needed something good to happen. They finally get it. Here comes St. Clair. He's got Fogan off to his left. He's in the gun. He looks across the field to wait for his coach's instruction. He's got three receivers to his right, a single receiver to the left. He'll hand the ball to Fogan. Fogan goes off the right side. He gets to the sideline, and a nice pickup of about five yards for Chris Fogan, the big tailback. Fogan had a lot of bodies out in front of him. The Cavs were fortunate to knock him out of bounds after just a five-yard pickup. Five carries for 27 for him now. You just wonder if uh, Fogan didn't uh, realize he needed to get out of bounds, keep that clock stopped, because it was a really mm. nice move on his part. He wasn't pushed out of bounds. He went out of bounds. So here come the Chieftains at second and four from the 26. St. Clair's in the gun. Fogan off to his left. Looks across the field. Cavs have been blitzing a lot in the third quarter. Let's see if they continue that here on this possession. He's going to keep the ball himself. He looks across the left side. He finds Near out there in the flat. And uh, not much of a pickup out there. We'll see how much they give him on that play. That's Near's 10th catch tonight. Did they give him anything on it? Just a yard, Just maybe. Just a yard, yeah. maybe, yeah. Got to bring up third and four from the 26. Here comes Bell Fountain going quick huddle here as they run to the line of scrimmage. Cavs a little bit uh, yeah, disorganized, they, yeah. but they get there in time. It's a great call, Mark. They were coming on the field hard. Here's St. Clair, looks across the field. Nobody deep in the middle of the field. Wilson said something to St. Clair as if to say, hey, I got single coverage out here. St. Clair goes right side, and he's got his man, Fogan. Fogan with the ball. He's going to go up the middle, gets to the 40, 45. Ooh. He's taken down about the 48-yard line. So a nice pitch and catch for Chris Fogan. The 5'11 senior takes it up the field. That it was. Got the, the situation they wanted, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And that's another Layfield Industrial Welding first And down. take the ball to the 46. That's a 20-yard pickup for Fogan that time, his I, third catch. Mark, I'm really impressed with Tavian St. Clair's ability to read the defense and find the open man. He's always going and reading his progressions, and he really has a nice job of finding the open man. Here's St. Clair in the backfield. He's got two to the right, one to the left. He takes the snap. Steps up the pocket, throws deep down the left side. He's got single coverage out there and just a lot of back and forth. I don't believe yeah. they're going to call anything. Both players got tied up. That was number 11, C.J. Wilson, and he was guarded pretty tightly there. Zabrida. Zabrida for the Cavaliers. Yeah. A good no call. I would agree with that. That's a couple of guys just running stride for side. That nobody's getting an advantage pushing and shoving. I think that, that was a good no call. So St. Clair goes deep down the left side, just out of the reach of C.J. Wilson. And that'll make it second and 10 from the 46, 10.41 to go. 15 to 22 on the game for St. Clair. St. Clair's going to hand the ball off to the first man through. And a nice run. Harper Scott, number 12 for the Bell Fountain Chieftains. His first carry tonight. Have not heard Scott's name tonight. 
Got right to midfield, four yard pickup. Here's a third and six. Third and six from the 50 yard line, 10 19 to go. Big third down play from midfield here for the Chieftains as they try to keep yeah. the drive alive. St. Clair in the offense looking to the sideline for a play call. Play clock's at 10. Here's Hayden Manns in the backfield now. And they're going to take a timeout, Mark, and probably a good thing here. They got a nice drive going, and they're going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WSN. 10.03 to go here in the fourth quarter from Coldwater High School. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine, and our entire WSN crew. Got the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Bell Fountain Chieftains in a dandy right now at 28-19. Bell Fountain's driving mark here at third and six. Uh, just a bit unfortunate that Coach Brown couldn't get the play call into his guys because they burned a second timeout. Now they'll play the final 10-03, which is a single timeout. So here's St. Clair. He's got big number 33, Hayden Manns, off to his right shoulder. He's going to take the snap, look across the field. He's under heavy pressure. Rolls to his right, and he tries to sling it back across the field. And St. Clair got basically got his ankle grabbed yeah. and couldn't move much. Jack Ebbing was blitzing off the right side of the formation. He dove into the ankles and grabbed a hold of St. Clair, forcing the incomplete pass. Couldn't get anything on it. Yeah, they're going to stay on the field mark at fourth yeah. and six from the 50, and uh, I, I think it's a good call. See what St. Clair can do. And that's the first time we've seen him not get out of trouble, Mark. Yes, that's, that, that's correct. Yeah. Get him around the ankles. There wasn't, wasn't any way he could jerk him loose to, to free himself and make a better play. So See if the Cavs come after him again. Hayden Manns is in this slot position. You wonder sure if he's back like there it. for pass protection. Yeah, they're going to move him back, move him back into the slot. St. Clair is in the gun. And, and they're going to take their last time out. Wow. My goodness. So... <laughs> You said it earlier, yeah. Mark. Uh, they got 9.57 to go here, and they don't have a timeout left. So Coach Brown not happy with that, I'm sure. He was not happy when he came on the field. He couldn't get them into the formation that he wanted that time. You mentioned Manns. He wasn't quite sure whether he wanted to be. St. Clair wanted him one place. I think maybe the coach wanted him a different place. And between the confusion between the two, he had to call timeout. And, boy, it's a long time to play. And, Particularly, you get, you know, you're down uh, two scores because of the missed PATs, and you may need those timeouts to help get the ball back later on. And I thought he was putting Manns back on St. Clair's right shoulder for pass yeah, protection, so but St. Clair kept pushing him up in the slot. Right. That, that's yeah. exactly right, although, you know, I was thinking if I'm St. Clair, I'm taking Manns out to dinner once a week. <laughs> Just protect right. me, young man. But <laughs> you take that guy out, you're going to have a pretty big food bill. So <laughs> Pick the restaurant and yeah. out. He's going to pay dearly. Oh, well, there's some great restaurants in oh, that town. Oh, yes, there man. is. Yes, there is. So here we go. Fourth and six from the 50. St. Clair is in the gun. He's got Hayden Manns off to his right shoulder. He's got trips to the left, a single receiver to the right. There goes the man in motion. That's Chris Fogan. They're going to fake the handoff. St. Clair's going to roll to his right. He's got a man out there, and he just misses oh, he Chris missed Fogan. He had Fogan in the flat. If he catches it, it's a first down, but he drops the ball. It was just a bit out of his reach. He was trying to lead him so he could make a play with it. It was just a bit outside of his reach, and he couldn't quite get to it. So let's see if that doesn't come back to haunt the Bell Fountain Chieftains as they turn it over on downs. Either and way, the ball's in midfield for the right, Cavs, right. and they've got this nine-point lead be interesting to see if Coldwater doesn't want to keep it on the ground here and protect this lead and run that clock, knowing, knowing that Bell Fountain has no timeouts. It'll be first and ten from the A little late getting into the huddle. He wasn't sure he was supposed to be in there this time. And he's going to get to run the football. And he's going to say they're going to give him the ball, and he's going to stay in bounds. can be as late as you want. <laughs> About a six-yard game yes, there. Yes, sir. And that's going to keep the clock running. Kind of a running back by committee tonight. There have been uh, six, six different Cavaliers have rushed the football tonight. Depwick's got 50 on 10 carries, but everything else has been pretty well balanced out. Ball down to the 44-yard line. And let's see what Blockberger does here with this, uh, with this play clock. It's down yeah. to 15, and I'm sure his coach, Chip Otten, has told him, run that down as low as you can get it. We're at 10 seconds on the play clock. Uh, they're going to run it down to about five seconds, and a nice job there as they'll hand the ball off, and they'll go to the right side. Bell Fountain trying to push him out of bounds, but Locked it's close. Again, right? yeah. Yes, it is, close to a first down. 
but he stayed in bounds. That yep. was the key. That's true. Another couple yards from Miles Popcotter. Third down and two from about the 42 yard line. Cavaliers lead 28 19. Eight thirty-eight to go as the clock continues to run. Blockberger in the gun. He's got number twenty-five off to his right. That's Cody Depwig. They're going to hand nope. keeping himself a nice fake by yes, Blockberger as he goes up the right side and he's going to stay in bounds or he tried to stay in bounds. Looks like they threw him out of bounds. The clock stops temporarily. That was a really nice play fake. Yeah, just his sixth rush of this evening picks up a a rushing first down this picks evening and. All the way down to the 28-yard line. Gives him a 14-yard pickup. Eight. Six carries, 37 yards for the quarterback this evening. He has a nice skill set, Mark. He runs he this really offense does. efficiently. The junior's only going to get better. I was about to say he does not play like an underclassman. No, he does not. He's handled himself like a senior this evening. Yeah. Here comes Blockberger as he hands the ball off to Depwig off the left side. Depwig trying to get around containment, and he's going to be taken down for no gain. Tried to get off the edge, but he just couldn't outrun the Bell Fountain defensive line. Couldn't get away from Brody Boy. Brody Boy is a physical linebacker who's done a nice job tonight. It'll be a no gain pot cotter that time. But the clock's eating up. They got it with 9.52. They've already burned a couple minutes off the clock. 7.50 to go, second and nine from the 27-yard line. Cavaliers lead 28-19. Danny Hobart, Mark Schein from Coldwater High School. Here come the Cavaliers. Blockberger drops the ball, and a flag comes in. I think that was a beat back. You're right, you're right. It was a marker, I'm sorry. Yeah. Not a very good arm by Jeff Klaus, so <laughs> no, he could have thrown that a little farther. <laughs> I just saw it out of the corner of my eye, and yeah. I thought, what in the world did they yeah, call there? Right. It's going to be a three-yard loss, however. Oh, uh, next time we see Jeff, we're going to have to tell him about that. <laughs> Third down and 12. Third I'm down. impressed by those uh, deep, uh, the uh, umpires really at the, at the back of the, uh, the deepest of the officials because some of those guys got really good arms. Yes, yes, they can They've really They've got that weighted, weighted <laughs> flag, and some of those guys can throw it a long <laughs> Chuck it. way. Yeah. <laughs> But this is third down. This is a big play here for Coldwater. Probably a four down situation for them. <coughs> Excuse me, here come the Cavaliers. Third and 13 from the 31. Clock continues to run at 6.50. Back and judge, counting. Well, I think a back judge. Here comes Blockberger. As he calls the play, he takes the snap. He's under heavy pressure. Almost taken down, he gets out of it. He is scrambling and he is gonna be taken down. And that is going to make it a fourth down and long as he loses about four yards. See what Coldwater does here is this is too far to kick the field goal. Take the ball back to about what the 33. Yeah, that'll make it fourth and so fifth. Couple of negative plays in a row there. So here's coach. We'll just take as long as we need to. Absolutely. Drew Frank entering the game for the Coldwater Cavaliers now. Oh, and uh, Kunk has been the punter. But I would think this is a go for it situation and see what happens. So Coldwater's going to go for it here in fourth and 15. And take a timeout. And out. take a timeout. Yes. They'll take a timeout. They'll talk about it. We'll talk about it here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WOSN. So here we go, fourth and 15 with 5.53 to go from Coldwater High School. Cavaliers continue to lead 28-19. And uh, they, they, I look like they were going to go for it. They call a timeout. Let's see what they do here, Mark. Well, I think they wanted to get everybody on the same page offensively. Uh, we certainly don't want to turn the football over here, but you want to you know, take a shot, see if you can pick up those 15 yards. So here come the Cavaliers as they went to the line of scrimmage and uh, – Blockberger called them all back to say something to him. He's got Jack Ebbing off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right and a single receiver to the left. Let's come off the edge. Blockberger takes it himself. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got a man out there. And he made the catch. He did. you got to be kidding me. What My a throw and goodness. what a wonderful catch. 
by Braylon Harleman. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple, and that's going to be an instant replay we talk about all season oh, long. Oh, yes, it will. Where did he go out of bounds? At about the one-yard uh, they're line? They're calling it the one-yard line, Mark. I thought he got a chance to get – I didn't think he could catch it when he went up for the ball, and he high-pointed it, got his hands up, and just took it away. What a catch. My goodness. Here the Cavaliers are going to put uh, points on the board from the one-yard line. Direct snap, and they'll go to the goal line. Direct snap to number 25, Cody Depwig, and he is going to be short as there is no signal given. That's not all bad. That just eats clock. Yeah, I was going to say it's a win-win for uh, Coldwater here with 5.33 to go, and the clock continues to run. When they needed a play, Blockberger made a he wonderful did. throw. And then the wonderful catch. Mark, I am really, really impressed with that young man. He has continued to lead this team, shown great arm strength, gets out of trouble, makes good decisions. Just an outstanding performance by the young quarterback, Balin Blockberger. So here's Depwig in the Wildcat formation. He's going, oh, he dropped the ball, and Bell Fountain may have recovered it, and that could be huge. And Bell Fountain says they got they it, do. and the officials say, oh, my goodness, Mark. Now, look, I know there's 4.57 to go, but that could have shut the door on Bell Fountain, yeah, and well, now yeah. they just gave him life. They were going to tack on another seven. It was going to be a 16-point game. And now, although they're 99 yards or so away, they've got a chance. Well, you got a guy like I was St. Clair. Say, when you got a guy like St. Clair, you're never that far out, and you can't get any farther out than this, 99 yards. Well, ask uh, – uh, Mary local Wapak last week. You know, exactly. A, a score, an onside kick, a score. Who would have thought Mary local would be good? You know, I mean, it's, oh, it's odd, goodness. isn't it? <laughs> and, and that's a good Wapak football oh, team. Oh, that's an outstanding you know, well Wapak football team. And, uh... All right. So here come the Chieftains, first and ten from the one-yard line. They got 99 yards to go to get this thing closer. St. Clair standing in the end zone. Boy, Ebbing wants to get at him, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He got around the ankles the last time, and he is so anxious to come from his right backer spot. And they got Hayden Manns back there for a little bit of pass <laughs> Who protection. Who moved over to that side. Oh, and almost a bad snap, and they're going to give it to Manns. I like that play, Mark, but that could have been disaster because yeah. that play, but they get him out of the hole there and at least get him up to a four-yard line. Maybe the three. Back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Yeah, there are no huddle here for the Chieftains as they are going quick and fast. Now they move Manns over to the slot on the right side. They've got two on each side of the receivers. St. Clair stands in the end zone. He calls for the ball. He looks across the middle. He's under heavy pressure. He throws it deep down the middle. He's got a man out there, and it's, oh, almost picked off. And a fantastic attempt. Let's see who that was for Coldwater. Can number six, A.J. Harleman, of course. Yeah. <laughs> He threw it off his back foot, got it out to the 40-yard line. Not as accurately as he's thrown some balls, but that shows his arm strength. Yeah, fantastic arm strength by that young man. Uh, don't worry, Buckeye fans. Uh, <laughs> he can throw the ball. So we're at third and eight from the three-yard line. Bell Fountain desperately needs to pick up something to keep this drive alive with 4.24 to go. St. Clair's in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the middle, goes off to his right side under heavy pressure. He's going to bring it out on his own. Here he goes, and he gets up to the 10, and that's where he'll be taken down about the 11, 12-yard line. He needed to get to the 11 for a first down. Let's see if he did. I yes. believe he yes, did. Yes, he did. And that's going to be a Layfeld Industrial first down. There you saw the agility of Tavian St. Clair, Mark, as he moves in the pocket. That he did, and when things opened up, he turned the Jets on and got just enough to get the first down. So here we go, 4.05 to go. Bell Fountain still continuing the drive. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. A little bit of breathing room for the Chieftains. St. Clair's going to take the snap. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to go back to the right. He's going to throw deep down the middle, and he's got a man out there. And that's Near. Near gets to the 30. It's about to the 32, and a nice pitch and catch for Near from St. Clair. Another <laughs> first down. Boy, Near, it's the 11th catch of the game. That was at a 31. That's a 21-yard pickup or 20-yard pickup, 168 yards on his 11 catches. <laughs> My score sheet only goes to 10 catches. <laughs> <laughs> you can't count past 10. Yeah, I got to keep moving around here. 11, Mark, that's yeah, the next that's number. 11. That's the next one. <laughs> Take my shoes off here. Uh -oh. oh, flags are on the field. They're going to say a false start by yeah. Bell Fountain. So Bell Fountain continues to make the stakes to the line of scrimmage. False start, Bell Fountain. 
Look, Mark, I, I don't know how long this uh, – this uh, meeting between these two schools goes, yeah. but last year a fantastic game. This yeah. year a really good game. Really. I hope they continue this. I would agree. Two schools equivalent size, really good athletes on both sides, and I really like this matchup. Well, everybody makes the playoffs now. You're taking 16 yeah, right. teams. Why not challenge yourself and see how good you are? Here comes St. Clair from the 20-yard line. He's backed up there. He's going to take the snap, looks across the left, goes in the middle of the field. He's got C.J. Wilson out there for a nice catch at about the 39-yard line. C.J. Wilson, we keep talking about Riley Near and C.J. Wilson. They've been as good as advertised, and the Chieftains don't huddle up. They're going to go straight to the line of scrimmage as the clock continues to run. We're under three minutes. Four catches, 77 yards now for C.J. Wilson. St. Clair takes the snap, looks off to the right, pump fakes. He's going to go down to the side and the right, and he's got a man out there, and he's just off the fingertips of the intended target, and that is Riley Near again. I don't know how Riley Mears got the strength yeah. to beat anybody deep. He's, he's <laughs> played well, such a good game tonight. He's got to be tired. Well, he's walking off the field. Now he's played defensive back the whole game, too. And that time he had to turn the Jets on because St. Clair unloaded that one. He just yes, couldn't he quite get to it. If there's any positive to look on that play, it is an incomplete pass. So it does stop the clock at 2.46 to go. Bell Fountain can't stop the clock unless they get out of bounds or an injury here. Well, Mears out of the game right now. That's one of your, you know, you're certainly one of your two top weapons, if not your top weapon. Here's Wilson on this side of the field. Yeah, Wilson over here in single coverage on the left side. St. Clair takes the snap, fakes it to Fogan. He's going to keep it himself, goes across the 40 to the 45 and gets out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. He'll pick up a Layfeld industrial first down. First down, Bell Fountain. Picked up seven yards and a first down. <clears throat> Just exactly what he needed, and then skated out of bounds to stop the clock and save his legs. 2.41 to go from Coldwater High School. We'll wrap this one up. The Cavaliers lead 28-19. This one's not over yet. If Bell Fountain can punch it in the end zone, they've got a fighter's chance. Now, they got no timeouts. We've talked yeah. about that. They spent that last timeout with about 10.02 to go in the fourth quarter. Near is, is, yeah. near is still out, too. Maybe not just fatigue. Maybe he's actually did something over there. Here comes St. Clair. As he looks to the right side, he throws a long pass across the middle, and no reception there but a valiant effort by number five for the Chieftains. And that is Zane Tevis, who he's targeted quite a few times tonight. Tevis just misses that one. That'll stop the clock at 2.36 to go. Can't see near on the far sideline. I'm guessing he's no. behind the, the player's bench there, probably getting attention of some type. Here comes St. Clair with 2.36 to go. Second and 10 from the 46. Chieftains desperately need to put it in the end zone and give their defense a chance to make a stop here. Here comes St. Clair. He takes the snap, looks down the left side. He's got Wilson out there and just overthrows C.J. Wilson. He had him on the left side wide open. He'd gotten in front of the defensive backs, and the defensive backs were behind him in an odd situation. Near was on the field that time. He stepped on from the far sideline, and now he's going to head out on third down. So you're right. Here he comes back. I don't think he's 100%. Danny. I don't think he yeah. is. You're right. So here we go at third and 10 from the 46. Cavaliers showing three at uh, rush people, and occasionally they bring a, a backer in as well, a drop into coverage. St. Clair rolls behind the block of Fogan. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to throw to the right side, and he's got a man out there, and he drops the ball. That'll bring up fourth and 10. The receivers got a little bit of the dropsies right now as they've dropped a couple here on this possession. Well, he's missed his last four passes. Not all his fault, though. And here it is, fourth down. Clock. Cavalier fans on our side of the field, they understand the importance of one more stop. Yeah, Mark, the clock continued to run after Did that it? incompletion, and the uh, uh, Bell Fountain offensive linemen were really telling the officials, and, and the official looked at the clock, and I think they're going to put some time back on the clock. I really do. See what uh, Mr. Klaus tells these timer to do here and they don't have they're not mic'd up here in uh, right. cold water so uh, that'll have to be relayed up to the box and Good coach Otten there. Yeah, coach Otten gets to do that one of the many jobs you get to do <laughs> when you're the head coach <laughs> so it looks like they're going to put we're going to go from 212 to let's see what they put back on the clock Ooh. or maybe they did put was it 212, or 219, 219. So they put seven seconds back on the clock. So here we go, fourth and 10 from the 46. And for all intents and purposes, this could be the game for the Chiefs as they look to keep this drive in line. St. Clair's in the gun. 
got two to the right, two to the left. Takes the snap, looks across the field. He's going to keep it up in the box. He tries to get away under heavy pressure. He's going to be taken out of bounds, and that will turn the ball over. The Coldwater Cavaliers stop the Bell Fountain Chieftains, and they'll turn the ball over. Really good job defensively that time. They put enough pressure on to force him out of the... Couldn't, couldn't, they forced him out of the pocket, they covered up deep. Really nice job that time defensively. So that ought to do it, Mark, with 2.10 yeah. to go. Coldwater can just run this one out. No timeouts on the Bell Fountain sidelines. Oh my goodness. Did we miss something? We there? missed, we missed we, a hole. Mark, I didn't see the flag. I, nobody saw the, play, or the flag. Nobody on this side of the field was saying anything. That's going to keep the Coach drive Otten alive. Coach wants to know what the call is. Coach Otten is stunned. And that penalty means first oh down, goodness. keep it going. This is a huge turn of events. I saw Coach Brown come on the field, and he was motioning to the officials, but I did not see a penalty flag at all. That is the sixth time that Bell Fountain has picked up a first down today by penalty, and they're down to the 44-yard line. So here comes St. Clair and the Chieftains. He's got Fogan on wow. his right shoulder. He's got one to the right and two to the left. He'll take the snap, looks across the field. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got a man out there. Near. He's got near in the end zone, and he's got a touchdown. Are you kidding oh me? Oh, my. Riley near with a 50-yard bomb from St. Clair. Mark, you can't throw the you ball cannot. any better. A, you can't throw it any better. And then you, B, you got a receiver who in traffic catches the football in the end zone. What a play on both ends that time. Unbelievable. That makes it 28-25. you got to believe they're just going to go for the extra point here. Maybe I. Well, you're going to go for the extra point. Then you yeah. got to onside kick it. And sure. Try to make something happen. You see, that was a 44-yard pass. And that means that near. It's a PAT this one. Here's the PAT attempt for the Chieftains. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is up, and it's blocked. It is well, blocked. Well, that means a field goal, the best you can do is tie. Oh, yeah. So 28-25. Wow. So Mark, the, there's 2-0-1 to play here. But no timeouts. No timeouts, so I, I get that. Get yeah, one. you got you to get a three and out. And the best case scenario here, Mark, is they get the ball back with well under. <laughs> well. Oh, if they can get it back here, let's see. Yeah, they they gotta they gotta get an extra uh, uh, I'm not onside good kick here. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Two fifty-six off the clock. It was a twelve play drive that went ninety-nine yards. And we have us a football game. 28-25. Boy, and, and PAT work has been a problem this evening yes, for is. the Bell Fountain Chieftains. Well, special teams play in general has been yes, getting has. their bugaboo right now. 28 to seven at half, Mark, and 28-25 uh, now as we got two minutes to go. Yeah, get to get those good hands people out there. What a touchdown pass, though. Excuse me, 21 seven and a half. I did, did you read your uh, it's a replay? You I better did. read it, because we're going to see that one again. <laughs> Tonight's instant replay <laughs> is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Simplified Flooring is our instant replay sponsor. Hear that, Zach? Zach Keith, <laughs> hear that? we got to see that one again. Jacob's been telling me all night, read that read, read that read. I'm watching football, Jacob. Is, I can't read. Is Zach on the, <laughs> Zach on the replay or on the uh, edit tonight? <laughs> yep, he? okay, yeah. well, Zach. Make us look see good. see that one again. Make us sound good. Make us look good, Zach. <laughs> well, sounding good, that's difficult. <laughs> look good. Well. Mm. All right, we've got the good hands people in. This is the play of the game right it now is. with 2.01 to go. Bell Fountain sets her up for an off or for an onside kick. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We'll let the play call itself here. And it looks like Coldwater Harlemont, a great job by number four, Brandon yeah. Harlemont, as he recovers the onside kick. Wow. Well, that'll make it 2.01 to go here. So an outstanding football game from Coldwater High School tonight. Both teams come in at 1-0. Coldwater, if they can finish this one, will end at 2 and or start at 2-0. Bell Fountain goes to 1-1. One one. It's 
Today's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. So here we go, 2.01 to go. Coldwater leads 28-25. Lockberger hands the ball off. We'll go to midfield at about the 49-yard line. They'll hand the ball to Miles Potcutter. Into a yard, but it continues the clock running. Play, Cox, play clock's at 31, 30 seconds to go. Take as long as you can if you're That's wearing exactly a, a what, Cav yeah. uniform right now. Well, exactly what Coach Otten is telling him. That brings up second and about eight to go here. Going to wind that clock all the way down. Play clock's at two, and he'll take a knee, and that will about do it. So Bell Fountain comes down to cold water. They don't get it done, Mark, but a valiant effort in the sec ha second half. Excuse me, Tavian St. Clair is the real deal. That he is. I'm just doing some quick numbers here. The numbers ended up being so similar this evening as we kind of wrap this one up here in the last half minute. I'm trying to figure out very quickly what Blockburger's numbers were. If you give me just a moment. For you, we got all the time in the world. That clock continues rolling down. We're at 42 seconds. And this could be the last play of the game. And it will be. It will be. Yep. How about that? So a great job by the Coldwater Cavaliers to close it out. Defensively, they hold the Bell Fountain Chieftains in the second half. Mark, your summarization of the oh entire game. Oh, my goodness. Game. Well, let's look at some stat numbers because they really tell you how close this particular football game was. 66 yards on the ground for Bell Fountain. Tavian St. Clair was 19 of 28 with one interception. 341 yards, three scores. They ended up with 407 as far as total yardage and they had just that single turnover. Coldwater rushed it for 126. Blockberger was 12 of 22, 270 yards. That gives them 396 yards. That's a total of 11 yards difference in the game between the two schools. And obviously just a single turnover for them when they were driving down there just a moment ago. This is a tremendous high school football game and you look at that three point difference and comes back to some special teams play and Coldwater finds a way to win the game. So that'll wrap it up from Coldwater High School. The Coldwater Cavaliers defeat the Bell Fountain Chieftains 28-25. For Mark Shine, our entire WSN crew, I'm Danny Holbrook saying God bless and we'll see you down the road.